Welcome back, folks, to another episode of Thursday Night Live, where we know one chord. Wait for it. And Tim's got one key on the keyboard. <laughs> Only one that matters. And we like to sing you guys a song sometimes, so if you're kind of new to this whole thing called Thursday Night Live, what you're going to understand is last year we wrote a little jingle. And after we got the three chords down packed and Tim found out his favorite key on the keyboard, it goes a little something like this. You ready? I forgot the word. I know, because he didn't write it down. I forgot. Well, how does it start again? <sighs> <laughs> I knew that was it. <laughs> Don't put the words. Oh, um, we talked about this before. Sure. We talked about this before. Uh, it's, 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 Okay, just, so just make it like, up. Just, make, just, just run. Like, don't have any plans? Yeah, that, that's, okay. how, that's the whole show. That, that's what we do? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Let's do it. Okay, so I... Welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live. That, that, was, that was it, right? Yeah, I think okay. so. Sound good. Where we just hang out and have some fun. When you know the G and the C and the D The G and the C and the D Welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live I'm your guy and Tim will tie a fly Ooh, nice. My name is Dana and he is Tim We don't know why <laughs> It's what his mom named him Your verse. Your verse. <laughs> no, no, I, don't, I don't sing. It's all you. <laughs> yes. I said, welcome back to another episode of Thursday Night Live. Thursday Night Live. It's another day and we're still alive. To tie flies. To tie some flies for you guys. Why, oh, why is anyone even here? <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows. <laughs> Well, if it's your first time here, folks, we just sit here and hang out and have a lot of fun. And we do tie some flies, and tonight, well, this is episode five, and the season four is flying by. So tonight, we're going to tie what we call the Kenny Lockwood Streamer, and then we're going to tie what we call a, kind of looks like a Dago, but it works because it's the Sulphur Emerger. The emergers are often one of the most underfished flies, and I don't know why. Probably because nobody can see them, but tonight that's what we're going to do. We're going to go a streamer and an emerger. <laughs> and you can see, I'm just here to entertain you guys. Yeah, it's working. And our it's friend Tim, well, well he's going <laughs> to, no, he's just going to, he's so just going to jam don't, don't on his keyboard. Away. Don't be scared away. So I learned these three chords before the show tonight, and I thought, I'm just here singing to you. My friends, this is Thursday Night Live Fly Time. And these are the people that make it possible. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, Keep it real for you, okay? 
How do we get out of this? I don't know. Just transit. You deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut. Oh, f- 
<laughs> all right. Up, all right. Welcome Enough back, folks. That nonsense. <laughs> what nonsense? I don't that know. That is it. not nonsense. That is what the kids are into these days. Well, we're not kids day and night, I hate to tell you. Well, maybe I am, but you're not. All right, folks. If you st- stuck around for that, good for you. You guys it. deserve a round of clicks. Yep. All right, so uh, I'm Dana Lattery. That's Tim Hepworth. This is What's Thursday up? Night Live Fly Time. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, it's a little better than what you walked into. So don't fret. <coughs> Things are about to get hopping here. And hopping. Uh, what we want to do, first of all, is show you guys kind of how this works. And uh, oh, hang yeah. out for a bit with yeah. the comments, folks. Some That's what oh, they're all about. Mr. John Onorati is back uh, today. They were licking mics over on Doug. Doug just got a whammo because he had the volume cranked up to hear (laughs) your sultry lickings. Oh, nice. Yes, you all win prizes. You all win prizes because (laughs) the the prize is is that we're going to tie some flies with you guys tonight here on Thursday Night Live. Fly tying. Oh, yeah. I don't know why that was so much work. I, I don't know how they do it. That's tougher than it looks like just talking in that voice and yeah, they just really do it. That's that's definitely that's why they get so many viewers. I feel like I <coughs> need some skinny jeans so, and some dark hair. Yeah, one time you're gonna tie an entire fly in Asimer. <laughs> in Asimer, in okay, Asimer. I definitely in can Asimer. Do it. <laughs> yeah, Asimer. Tim's porno stash for the uh, win, yeah. and more so than the porn stash is the sound that it made on the microphone. Oh, that was good. That was pure yeah. gold. That's good. But the party has begun, and so, yeah, you're new here. Um, Tim will kind of tell you a little bit about what we do, and then I'm going to show you guys. If you're new and you don't have one of the kits, then I'll kind of go over the materials that you're going to need for tonight for the flies. Yeah, absolutely. So Thursday Night Live, guys, what do we do? What are we about? So um, every night we come together on Thursday, we tie uh, two different patterns, two different flies. Um, <clears throat> that's just a small portion of what we do. That's just the, the instructional piece. The rest of it, we are really here as an open platform to talk about anything. I mean, really anything we would talk about, but more specifically, we dive into things regarding to fly fishing. We answer any questions. That's the really fun part about this being interactive and being um, that you're able there to ask questions because we're here to answer them to the best of our ability or lean on each other to answer the questions as well. Um, this this is a, a huge feedback from, from both sides. So it's awesome that way. This started a uh, war season four, so it started technically, I guess, five years ago. Um, we were originally were in a brewery, and now we're here in, in the studio, thanks to all the things COVID. But it's actually turned out to be pretty amazing. We were able to reach a ton more people this way, and it's really been uh, an absolute blessing. So what we do is a lot of BS, a lot of coming together, and just you know hanging out, tying some flies. Uh, all I mean, to, to be completely serious, this is about a community, about bringing people together, uh, leaning on each other through the hard times and the good times. You know, taking people out of this group and getting on the river, which is super rewarding to see happening, um, and getting to meet you guys on our boats is amazing. All those things—it just it, it's, it comes full circle. Thursday Night Live can't really be summed up in a conversation outside of just saying it's it's a blessed family. That's what we are, and we're excited to have you here if you're new. Hundred <clears throat> percent. And so, if you didn't get a kit, what we're gonna kind of do is head over here and uh, show you just how you can join in with us every single week and not feel discluded. Unincluded. Unincluded. Yeah. I don't Whatever know the word is, is, it's not included. It's not so, included. anyways, you head over to our website, flyfishingbowriver.com. Okay. If you want, there's still some of these kits available. Uh, there's 40 different patterns, lots of cool stuff in there. At our website, you're going to head over here, click on more, more. And so sometimes that doesn't work. <laughs> more, <laughs> more, more, more. more. So let's refresh this website and try this again. More. There we go. There we go. It's always there. <clears throat> and then you're going to click on Thursday Night Live. And then you're going to head over to TNL Season 4. Um, you can buy your kit there. But every week, it's all stored here. So you, if you click on these uh, images here, they're going to take you to the YouTube channel where everything is stored. You want to tie this silent bob. It's quick there. The material is here. But let's take you guys all the way down to what we're doing tonight, which is the Ken Lockwood streamer. Yeah. And basically, uh, there's your material. So I'll leave it up here for a few seconds so that you guys can uh, uh, get what you need. But just head over to the website also, and it's all there just so you guys can kind of pre-plan if you didn't get a kit. 
this is going to be up there well in advance. So as you come into the weeks, we're going to be here for another 15, yeah, 15 episodes. Yeah, till <clears throat> May or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, use this as your resource. All these materials are here for you guys to uh, prepare yourselves so that you can join in. We will be tying the flies this week. Uh, and every week out of the pre-packaged kits that we do sell. So it, it is a lot easier uh, if you guys get a kit. Uh, uh, but again, then again, this is for everybody. So if you didn't get a kit, uh, we would love you guys to still hang out with us and yeah. enjoy Thursday Night Live fly time. <coughs> what else do we do? We play bingo. So you can go get a bingo card at uh, flyfishingbover.com slash Thursday Night Live. And I'll just kind of show you that here because I get a lot of questions about that and emails. Uh, quick video. But this uh, Watermaster Flyingo, um, you just enter your name and email and then you're going to be able to get yourself a bingo card. And then we play bingo here and it's totally free to play bingo. And we have lots of really cool prizes. And I'm not talking just like a sticker. Like we get a lot of really cool stuff from our sponsors and our yeah. friends <coughs> to give to you guys as you join in with us so yeah, yeah feel free get your friends join in um <coughs> and if you can't make it if you can't finish the show with us tonight all of this is stored on youtube as well at 9 30 tonight our time the quick ties will go live so both of these flies that tim ties he'll just have like a condensed version and that's really cool so uh mm -hmm. Yeah, what else? Cody made we... a good point there. He said 20% uh, off your next purchase at Rock Mountain Flash Shop comes in those kits as well. So um, we don't, guys, I mean, we're, not, we're obviously we're here to sell you the kits because that's we think it's a, a thing of ease um, for making this a lot easier. But that actually just goes back to supporting the show and making it and making it run, to be quite honest. But there is little perks in there like that. So Cody Frankie working for um, Rock Mountain Flash Shop, one of our big sponsors. There's 20% yeah. off in your, of your first purchase. so And yeah. there's $100 off of a guided fishing yeah, trip with off. us this summer. That's true, that too. And just so you guys know, some pretty cool stickers showed up Ooh. in the mail today. Yeah, yeah. How do you get those? I don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Definitely one of those will be going over here in the bingo pile tonight. So. <laughs> yeah, a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <coughs> all right. So ask questions. We have something called the SOS, and if you hit... SOS or type in SOS, it stands for stop our show. So mm -hmm. we just pause. You can ask your question and we can help answer that. Uh, Tim can answer. I can answer. Uh, we've got the plethora of Google in front of us. If we can't answer, because we literally don't know near everything <laughs> or even close, close to it. No so way. we just do our best as a community to help bring you guys the information that you need to make you a, a more successful fly tire, a more successful fisherman, mm -hmm. and ultimately a better person when you leave here tonight. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Okay, so let us know where you're from, what you're <laughs> drinking. Um, the mustache is People getting a, a lot, of, a <laughs> lot of comments. Of, a little hate, little love, <laughs> a, lot a lot of love, a lot of love. <laughs> What's my new pet name? <laughs> Oh just man. so you guys can enjoy the comments like we do. Uh, yeah. But yeah, seriously, the first two, we need two threads yep. or one with your dubbing. Yep. Explain mm -hmm. that. So if you guys, so on our on our first fly, guys, we're tying, um, well, I'm going to show you real quick here, a uh, picture of it. This is our sulfur merger, great little bug. Um, we gave you some yellow dubbing in your kits if you're not going to, um, if you don't have yellow thread, basically. I'm going to tie it with yellow thread because it's, it's the way it's supposed to be tied. If you don't have yellow thread, it's easy to just dub on a little bit of that dubbing, create the, the yellow underbody that you need. So if you have yellow thread, load up a bobbin with it. Um, if you have an option of having super thick yellow thread versus small, go with the thick stuff because we're creating an underbody. And then your second one, I'm going to use a, um, a six aught. Uh, it's going to be a lighter thread. Um, sorry, eight aught is what I'm going to use tonight. And I'm going to use it in like a light brown color. Um, and that's going to be for our other fly. So um, th those two are both going to be used in the same fly at the same time. So have those ready to rock and roll. Yeah. <clears throat> Tom Selleck fly tying. And <laughs> Greg Childers, I believe I'm saying your last name correct. Uh, you've made some pretty incredible comments on some of our stuff on social media. Mm -hmm. um, and that's absolutely everything is the better person part. It's why we're here, guys. Um, yeah. You can go watch fly tying on YouTube. I'm sure of it. Uh, but I promise you, you won't find a uh, better family than you will here. Yeah. Uh, 100%. Thursday Night Live. So, um, okay, comments and drinks. So, drinking yeah. an early B-Day drink. It is 
Mark's birthday tomorrow. Oh. So we have a little something for Mark. Oh, what's up? It? Is your birthday tomorrow? It's all good. Tomorrow, but it's good enough for us. By the time the show ends, it'll be tomorrow for him. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. So you do sing. Well, yeah, but it's uh, not well. <laughs> happy birthday, Mr. Holcomb. Oh, Cheers. yeah. So everybody raise your glasses yeah. and take a drink Cheers. for it's the birthday, birthday for Mr. Mark Holcomb. It's your birthday. Yeah. All awesome. right. Awesome, Just awesome. like that, you're nobody to us, Mark. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Let's see. Running a stiff water with a lot of ice. Stiff water. Nice. Oh, stiff water. Happy birthday. Um, looking for alternatives. We're we talking about waiters. We do try to get to oh, everybody's yeah. comments. Michael with a crazy awesome beard. Is is drink any England with your... Michael, I need <laughs> I clarification. Yeah. You might have drank sure in too many <laughs> Englands. <laughs> <laughs> but we need to know. It's Too not a bad thing. Ones. Oh, yeah. All right. HBD. Oh. Uh, okay. So your thread is ready. Yeah. The Five of Diamonds. I almost grabbed that for us tonight. The that other drink that good. we're doing um, oh, yeah. this is, is super we're awesome. To. This is 80. 88, 88 Brewery in Calgary. And it is the Wave Pool Hazy or Tropical IPA. Yeah, this uh, is the Tropical IPA. Super yeah. good. But currently, what are we what are we drinking? We're drinking a Prairie Sunset. Yeah, Balzac Brewing. <clears throat> We're just trying stuff. Blonde yeah. Ale. Uh, give it about a th- two and a half. Out of fifty. <laughs> it's not bad. It's okay. It's, it's, okay. it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Was better. Eighty-eight is better. That's yeah. a fact. Um, anything else we need to go over before we start tying flies? I don't think so. Not <laughs> we also have the bacon cam set Ooh, up. We do. What's and on the I, bacon cam? Well, you'll have to wait and see. <sighs> hey, uh, and we also have a pretty cool video yeah. uh, on the Bow River. And it's more an instructional video. So we like to kind of do that with the Fly Fishing Academy. So, yeah, we're going to jump in and tie this fly. Remember, folks, SOS. You say SOS. I hit the alarm. Ooh. We see the screen flash. We know it is time to stop the show. And we'll work it out. And we'll work it out. Yeah. All right. <coughs> Dana's right, shorts, short yeah. movies. Oh. Um, yeah, good question. It is a good question. Yeah. He's not great about finding places for his videos. You, yeah. Um, <coughs> I'll just show them all here throughout <laughs> yeah. the air. <laughs> you have to ask uh, him. A re- really cool one. I don't know if you guys have seen the hunting one I did, but yeah, I like that one. A and lot. it's not fly fishing, but I think a lot of fly fishing people are waterfowl hunters, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I do want to show that because yeah. I'm proud <coughs> of the people that I got to spend a couple seasons with, <coughs> and uh, YouTube has them. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, let's roll into some fly tying. Greg Childers is enjoying my new mic. Yes, That's he nice. is. I like it too. You sound so good. Sounds so good. We've been working just, hard to make me sound as good as it, you, although it's not totally possible. It's close. We're as close it's as we're going to get. And the, right, a, and the asthma section of the. the who, section. who here saw the beginning intro? Put, put <laughs> wave, high five, whatever. Give us an emoji that looks something like this. And uh, you don't want to miss bingo tonight. No, don't. Because there's some Real pretty cool, cool stuff. A lot of it's coming from our friends at Rocky Mountain Flash Shop. Absolutely. All right. It is. Without much further, I don't. Further, I do's. Tim, you're up. All right, folks. Let's get into this. So we're going to start off tonight. We're going to tie this sulfur emerger. <coughs> All right. Boom. Now, you might be thinking um, that's not a super attractive fly, and I would agree with you. I don't think this fly is a, a super good looking fly in your hand, but um, it doesn't need to look good to you. It needs to look good. Uh, to the fish which it does and that's all that really matters so um, <clears throat> we're gonna take you through this one I'm not gonna lie this one has some steps okay it is actually a simple tie but there is some steps so stick with me I'm gonna take it a little slower on this one because we do have a little bit more explaining and a, and a couple new techniques I'm kind of excited to show you because um, we've never gone over them before um, so yeah so go ahead I need to grab my kit 
head on into your kit. You're gonna grab your season four, episode five. Gonna look like this guy here. Um, you're gonna have two different packages in the back. One's got red in it, one's got yellow. Let's go ahead and pull out that yellow one. That's what we're gonna use first. So as I said before, guys, we have that yellow dubbing in there um, only because we thought maybe you wouldn't have yellow thread. Okay, I'm gonna tie it with yellow thread because it makes it easier. Um, and it's kind of a cool technique learning to tie with more than one bobbin at the ready and kind of learning and understanding how we can actually just use thread to create our underbodies or to create our um, a way of dubbing, things like that, which we're gonna go through, okay? Get my waste basket set up because there is gonna be a little bit of need for that. All right, so let's get in there. As always, be careful when you're opening up your kits because there is um, hooks in there. Often they're kind of caught up in the dubbing and stuff so they don't fall all over the place, but you don't want to lose them. Um, the cool thing we didn't really mention actually about these kits that we that we provide um, is you've already got both of these tied uh, sorry these flies tied for you in there so no matter what yours turns out like you've got a f each of these patterns to have and to fish at least once which is kind of a nice perk too um, and then gives you the opportunity especially in this in this pattern um, we gave you lots and lots and lots of extra dubbing like we're talking lots of it so <clears throat> there's there's tons of extra material to tie this over and over if you have the hooks and, and such to do it with um, which is kind of cool too it gives you the opportunity to tie it a couple more times um, if that's what you so desire okay so let's go ahead and get this hook in our vise we are tying on <clears throat> a size 14 emerger style hook now what is an emerger style hook well it just means that it's got uh, a little bit of an extended bend um, in the hook bend which means we're probably going to tie down into it so if you think of emergers what is an emerger well an emerger is a fly that is not quite to the surface <clears throat> although it's sitting in the balance of the surface so this guy is going to sit partially under the water partially on top so emerger as it sounds this fly is emerging from the bottom it's no longer in its nymph stage and it's not quite in its adult stage it's in between um, and it's actually one of the most vulnerable stages for a fly to be in because it's just kind of um, hanging in the balance we'll say where it's just not quite able to fly away and it's not able to swim away it's kind of stuck in that in the, in the middle so super effective to fish and lots of people forget that mergers are actually one of the most effective um, you know style of dry fly fishing okay so we're going to start off by grabbing i'm going to use that <clears throat> a dot or 70 denier in brown kind of bronzy brown color i'm going to start this thread um, and when i start this thread guys i want you to take a really nice long um, tag of thread off the back okay because we're going to actually use this tag of thread so let's go ahead, tie this in, all the while leaving a really nice long tag off the back. We're gonna take this all the way, lock my bobbin here, take this all the way deep into the bend back here. And now this piece of thread, I'm just gonna lay it. If you've got a material clip or something like that, try to get her stuck in there and uh, out of the way, okay? Cause we are gonna use that coming up, but we also don't wanna cut it off, which happened to me earlier today. So be careful when you do that, um, that you don't do that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that thread, I'm going to bring it back to kind of um, one third of the hook shank length back. Um, I'm going to get in my first material. So the first material is you're going to have some Antron or Zelon, either works. Um, this, this, some, this could actually be done with dubbing as well, but normally you'll find this in like almost like a yarn fashion and it'll be on a spool, um, sometimes in a package too, it just depends. This is going to be too much, too thick of a piece of a rope we give you. So I want you to actually split that in half and that'll be about the right amount. Looks well, like Mr. <clears throat> uh, Fruity Pebbles is in the house. Ooh, the Spendy's little. What's up, buddy? Um, we're going to kind of roll this, okay, so it kind of turns into a bit of a rope. Don't worry about how long it is because we're going to trim that here in a minute. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this on top of my hook. Take a nice securing wrap. Make sure it's in there. Three or four nice turns. Make sure it's not going anywhere. I'm going to lift that front straight up and almost just spin it, and it'll kind of rope up for me. I'll trim that out and set that aside because we can still use that we, we could tie many many flies out of this piece that we've given you um, now i'm going to bring my thread back forward i'm going to throw a quick half hitch in this just to secure it and i'm actually going to go ahead at this point and i'm going to cut this thread out okay this is that part we we're talking about where we're going to use multiple threads and that one came out of my bobbin which is awesome i'll worry about that in a minute i'm going to go over to my yellow okay i'm going to take my yellow thread and i'm going to start it right here okay we can go ahead and cut that tag out. 
And at this point, if you don't have yellow thread, that's okay, don't worry about it. Just keep using your bronze thread. As you go all the way back, when we bring this yellow thread forward, you're just gonna dub that yellow dubbing we gave you um, to bring it forward if that's what you need to do, okay? Now I'm gonna <clears throat> lift this straight up so that it stays right on top. And I'm gonna pull nice tight wraps because I wanna, I wanna have control over the overall size of this body. So by pulling tight, I can kind of create that effect of having more control. Take it right down into the bend, okay? And now I'm slowly gonna do nice, even wraps all the way forward. And we want this to look solid yellow as we do. So the first time over, we had a little bit of brown peering through. This time as we go forward, nice, even touching wraps. This is our underbody for the rest of the fly. We wanna bring that forward right to there. Sean just got his first cut out of the way with his new shore Ooh. scissors. How was it? The wizard says, wow. Wow. Sean the wizard, the Ellison. Wizard. The wizard. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and trim. What's up, Vince? Welcome. What's up, James, guys? so if you don't have yellow thread, show them the dub because that's, yeah. that's uh, confusing. Yeah, so guys, just give me a moment to re <clears throat> get my bobbin back together as it slipped out on me. The one downside to the Norvice bobbins is that if you do let go of the thread, it all comes out on you. Yeah, so I guess you want me in. to tell everybody, yeah, a, joke. Tell everybody a, good joke. a joke. So one time... What I can do is I can throw myself into this like this, just like this. Okay, so what happened here is Tim slipped on his bobbin. <laughs> <laughs> what he's doing with his push broom over top of his lips is trying to suckle that it's good to go. bobbin. <laughs> it's See, good to go. that's that's just how simple it is, folks, that, that, for him it's to that just easy. suck it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And I disappeared like the Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> okay, guys, so you might be wondering what this material is meant to be back here, okay? It's not just a tail. This is actually meant to be a trailing shuck. So this is meant to signify that that um, bug is losing its nymph um, shuck, its outer casing, and it's emerging out through it, but it's still taking on to a little piece of it. So when we measure it, we want it to be about half the overall hook length. We'll kind of go half, go half back behind it. That's where we're gonna leave that guy. Okay, so don't forget about the dubbing instead so you, of yes, thread. Yes, I will. You wanna you wanna have a significant little tail there because that's it is meant to be not a tail but a trailing shock. Okay. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to my brown thread. So guys, um, like Dana said, and I previously said, if you didn't have, well, we gave you dubbing in case you didn't have yellow thread. Yeah, really, that's all it came down to. So when you saw me bring my yellow thread back forward, instead of doing that. Take a little pinch of this stuff. Let's just imagine my thread is back at the back of the fly. Take a little, a tiny pinch of it. All, we're gonna, all we would do is make a little dubbing noodle like that. So now technically I've got yellow thread. Wind it from the back forward to where I am. That's all we gave you that for, just in case you didn't have yellow thread. Um, even though the original pattern is meant to be done with thread, <clears throat> we just gave you that in case, okay? So take that, bring it forward to that point, and you're gonna be good to go. <clears throat> Ooh, the frogs are living in the throat today. Okay, so <clears throat> next thing we are gonna do is we are gonna learn a new skill together. Although I do kind of already know it. Together. I am going to just do a half hitch, save that work, set my bobbin out of the way. Now we're gonna come back to this tag we had here, okay? Um, and this is, <clears throat> what you're gonna need with this is you're gonna need a little bit of dubbing wax. <clears throat> if you don't have it, it's gonna be a little bit tougher to create the same effect. Do you need CPR? Yeah, I got, <clears throat> seriously, a frog in my throat. Um, I know CBR. Call nine one one. No, but I'm here. I can't do anything. <laughs> <from you're>, here. <laughs> they're like, hey sir, <clears throat> he's already there. Yeah, he can't work on himself. So all I did, guys, is I took that piece of thread and I put it in a in a um, hackle pliers. That's all I did here, just to just to kind of secure it and to keep it uh, attached, so I don't have to like wrap it around my finger to do anything with it that way. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm using some of this loon. It says called the high tax wax. Mis Swash. miserable stuff to store but it's effective and for the for the reasons that we're about to use it um, and what I'm gonna do with it is I'm just gonna come up on this thread and I'm just gonna touch it okay just leaving a little bit of sticky stuff on it try not to leave too much because I don't want it to be this big sticky mess it's meant to just be touching it okay so just touch the thread come down about two inches you don't need to be a ton here but more importantly you do want it to be right up near the top of the thread and once I've done that if I feel like I got little clumps that are maybe too big, I can just kind of rub them in. This is imperative. Bit. We do talk about dubbing <clears throat> a lot 
and people ask, should we use wax or don't use wax? And we're yeah. like, yeah, it's a preference. The way this is done, it's not a preference. No, this is a necessity on, on this style. So we're gonna call this, for lack of better terms, touch dubbing, okay, touch dubbing. Um, it's because we're simply gonna create a dubbing blend out of what we gave you, and we're gonna touch it to the thread, leaving just the most min minuscule, the word I'm looking for? Minuscule, minuscule amount of pubes on yeah, your... <laughs> Pretty much, that's what it looks like. Like, yeah, not meant to look pretty, just meant to be effective. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a clump of that brown dubbing that we gave you. I'm gonna start off by pulling it apart, stacking, we call it stacking, okay? Pull it apart, put it back on top, pull it apart, put it back on top, just like so. Now we're actually gonna kinda rope this up a little bit, kinda roll it, so it looks something like that. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this off even. Okay, get that little piece out of there. Now I'm gonna do the first couple cuts so you can see it from this height. But what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna put tiny cuts all the way back down, cutting this into tiny short little pieces. So the, the dubbing fiber itself is super small. Um, this is gonna be how we blend this together. Okay, so watch here. Take my first cut. See that tiny width? Super tiny. Set that aside into a little pile. Just keep going, doing the same thing. You really don't need a ton of it, but cut it at least you know four or five times just to be sure. You don't want it to be super short, but you need it to be about that like quarter, quarter inch, a few centimeters. I'm gonna do one more here and that'll be plenty. So then I can set that aside, <clears throat> go to that little pile that I created of all this little dubbing. It'll look like that, just kind of clumped all together. I'm just gonna pull it apart a little bit, kind of spread it out. If there's any hard clumps in there, just pull them so they separate, okay? And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of hold it between my two fingers like this, just exposing some of those little bit of fiber, okay? I'm gonna lift up that thread that I've got all that wax on, and I'll lift it straight up so you can see. And all I'm gonna do, try to get that little piece out of there, is I'm gonna come in and touch the thread. Touch, 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 touch. So as you can see, it did not put very much on. It's just a wisp, okay? And you don't want a lot. If you get too big a clump, I want you to go in there and pull it out. So like this clump up top, it's a little too thick and you can just pull a little bit of it out. Same thing down here, that one is a little bit thick. And we want it to be fairly even all up and down that thread, okay? And that's what we call touch dubbing. All we did was go in there and touch little bits of that dubbing to that wax that we have on there, okay? And this is gonna almost create like the effect of palmering up different types of um, CDC or something like that. It's just giving it a very buggy appearance um, without overdoing it, okay? So this is what I'm left with right here. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my rotary function to just do it, take a nice open palmer up like so, okay? And we, if you have too much, is, too much of it in little spots, it's okay, we can fix that. We're gonna go back and, and deal with that in a moment. You don't wanna take out all the yellow. You wanna see the yellow through the fly, okay? That's the whole point, that's the underbody of this. Um, we're just giving the appearance of this body having legs and also shedding that shuck, okay? We're gonna bring that right up to where we left our thread, bring our thread back, and we're gonna take a wrap behind it and a wrap in front of it, okay? Like so. Make sure that's good and secure. It's not gonna go anywhere and let's trim it out, okay? We can get rid of that uh, that thread and the, and the hackle pliers now. We're not gonna use those anymore. Okay, so that's what we're left with, guys. So that's a new technique we've learned today together, touch dubbing. Really cool way to just add just a smidge of dubbing here and there without overdoing it and it'll be just enough to hold a little bit in. And as it's in the water, that lo those uh, little bit of dubbing is gonna pulsate, it's gonna look like it's the, the fluttering body of a mayfly and it's in that emergent stage, or a caddis even at this point. Um, it's just really a good searching pattern for this. This one specifically is a sulfur is a little bit different, but uh, most emergers tied in this kind of style and different colors can really be a good searching pattern. So I've turned and I've tipped my hook up just slightly. It's gonna make this next part a little bit easier, okay? So let's take that thread, we're gonna come back to that kind of third mark, third way mark again. Maybe a smidge farther back. Right about there. And now we're gonna go and grab some of that nice light cream colored dubbing that we gave you guys. And again, this is gonna be just a little wisp. Okay guys, we've given you about 10 times too, well 10 times, like a thousand times too much of this stuff. Um, so squirrel it away somewhere um, so you have it to use again. 
All I'm gonna do is create a nice tight little dubbing noodle. And by tight, I mean super tight, as tight as you can get it, because you want lots of control. If it's a loose dubbing noodle uh, and lots of the, the dubbing is poking out all over the place, we have less control with it. Whereas if we do a really tight one, um, and tight, it just means I, I literally squeeze my fingers tighter and really rope it up so it's super tight. Once I've got that, sometimes you can moisten your fingers and it'll make it even tighter. All I'm gonna do- uh, That's usually the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I'm gonna take a couple wraps, guys. We're gonna make a nice little kind of, we're gonna use that word again, bulbous thorax, okay? Gonna use up all that dubbing. And I'm gonna finish with my thread just in front. And again, I'm gonna work a few thread wraps back. Okay, so I'm right about there. If you got any errant fibers, just kind of get them out of the way, okay? There's our thorax. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the portion of the fly that's really actually gonna assist it to float um, just the top of this. All the rest of this is probably gonna be under the water, um, but with this wing we're gonna put on it, it's gonna, it's gonna float it, okay? So we put some, a patch of deer hair in there. Um, you could use deer hair. Um, probably the most popular deer hair used is called Comparadun. If you've never seen that, Google that word, see what it looks like. It's used for using uh, deer hair wings on dry flies, called comparadon hair. Um, also very popular in the original on this fly is actually caribou hair. It has really good floatable properties um, and really the right color. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna take a fairly good chunk of this, not crazy big, but take more than you think you should need because um, once you're done pulling out all the under hair and stuff, it always ends up being lighter than you, than you expect. So take a decent little clump off the side of it Let's trim that out. And now this hair, guys, is um, kind of the more expensive or the better quality hair you get. It's, it's quite fine, um, especially in this compared to style hair. Um, go in there and get the under, under fluff out. Um, and then as we use this hair, it can be difficult to stack because it's really, really fine and light. It's not, um, when you pull off the bottom, sometimes it doesn't want to come out, it wants to stick in there. So one little trick I'd like to tell you is um, if, if you're struggling to get the, the hair to come out of the back of your hair stacker, take a, um, a dryer sheet from your dryer, stick it in there, rub it around and pull it out. It pulls all the static out of there. It'll, it'll really assist in helping that to, to I'll stack I'll just be better. in the cooler for a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hot in here right now. So stick that hair uh, tips down because we want to stack the tips obviously. Give that a couple smacks on the table. And now we want to orient it so that the base of the hair stacker is back down um, to the back of the fly. We'll see if this worked for us. And it did, magic, okay. Oh, so what's kind of cool yeah. with this here is this hair that we gave you creates a really cool looking wing. It's got dark tips, it goes light, and then it gets dark again. Um, and then as it goes down the stem, it's kind of got a little bit lighter appearance too. Okay, so let's get a good grip on those. This is a little bit too much for this fly and I am gonna adjust how much I have. I'm gonna pull out some of those ones that are kind of long and out on their own in the bases, flip it around. And the best way to really tell if you've got too much or not is come in and set it. Set it on top of the fly. I like that amount right now. That's not too much at all. It's gonna have a slight flare to it. We're gonna use the butts just a little bit, okay? Um, so how I measure this, I've laid my fingers on the eye of the hook and all I'm doing is I want, if I kind of tip that back I imagine that they, the, those black tips are gonna extend just to the back of the hook bend. Okay, so right back here, which is basically right where they're sitting. I'm gonna take and switch hands, pinching, keeping them right on top of the fly and all that, how I control that is just simply by that pinch that I've done. Um, I'm a left-handed tire, so I'm gonna take my bobbin and spin it clockwise. So I spin it, I'll bring this up so you can see it right there. I take it and I spin it clockwise. It's gonna spin and cord up. Um, and then when I go to take my wrap, you'll see that thread jumped back against my fingers, okay? If I were to do it the other way, I spin counterclockwise, and I come here and I go, it wants to jump away from my fingers. So a neat little trick to getting your thread to jump back to your fingers is always spin it towards the fingers holding the material. I'm left-handed, so I go clockwise. If you're right-handed, you would go counterclockwise, and it has the same effect, okay? So I get that back, it grabs, and I get a couple good wraps on it, like so, making sure it's not moving. I'm gonna grab those butts and, and really orientate it, make sure it's right on top of the hook where I want it to be, okay? So I've got a couple of those securing. Now I wanna pull about half of the hair up and put a thread wrap through it. Squeeze again, take the rest of them up, take a couple thread wraps through it again. Kind of bend those back. Now I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna put one more right through the middle of them, like so, and then back in front again. Okay, 
And now before I do anything else, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna throw a half hitch in because I do not wanna lose my work, okay? When working with your hair. So you can do it with your fingers or just take a half hitch tool, which is just basically anything that's got a hole in the end. I'm gonna take a wrap around it once, stick it on the eye and pull it off. Do it a couple Bruce times. Bruce Cameron just showed up later, better up, later Bruce? than never. Nobody's good. called SOS. Nobody, that's good. I wanna use the new button. <laughs> Call up people, he needs you. So now guys, we're gonna leave just a little bit of these butts in here. So I'm gonna come in here and trim. Now there's two ways to finish off this fly. I'm gonna basically show you one and then do the other. So the first way is to leave it almost like a caddis, okay? Where you just leave that little tuft of, uh, of hair and I would whip finish it right there, okay? That is one way of finishing this fly. It's my preferred way. I like the way it looks oh, the most. We got SOS from Cam. Uh, you would, Cam. Because you got to stop the show. He's just being too kind. Cam? Oh, he needs a beer. Well, Cam, you probably have one just about six inches to your left. So <laughs> that's what happens when you call SOS. <laughs> we stop the show. Stop the show. Just but it's just Cam. It's just Cam, so it's okay. We, know we don't going. care. <laughs> okay, guys. So... <clears throat> Like I said, two different ways to finish this fly. The original pattern will be the next way that I do it. Um, you could just leave it like this um, and whip finish or take a half hitch and just call her good. Um, it looks great just as is, but the, the last little touch that, that they would do in the original pattern is take the smallest little, this little tiny piece of dubbing, make one more little dubbing noodle, okay? Super tight one, like this. Hey, hey Ron. Showing up to the party. What's up, A.A. Hey, hey, Ron? It's so sad when people miss the opening. I know. And all I've done here, guys, I've taken a couple wraps with this dubbing, really driving the butts back and creating kind of like a little bit of a um, an added thorax at the front. I find it's, it's actually more difficult normally to get that to fit in there. And ergo, I normally don't do it. But it is the original way it's done, so let's do it. And now that I've done that, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in there with my half hitch tool again because I prefer to finish my flies this way. I'm gonna take two, two wraps, stick it on the eye, pull it off my tool, do it one more time, pull it off the tool. I'm gonna go ahead in there and trim out my thread, set that aside. Now this is a good time to go in here and check and see if you've got any hair or other fibers that you don't want it in where you want it to be. If you take a look at the underside of that fly, that is super You've sexy. you disappeared from us. Oh, I disappeared. That's, That's it. okay, you can still hear my voice and see the fly. That's all <laughs> that matters. Um, so guys, as you can see, this emerger, um, imagine now that that deer hair is what's actually sitting in the surface film. Okay, so that, that deer hair would actually be tipped back almost like this, be sitting in the surface, and all the rest of that shuck in the body is sitting down below. And that is, that is one, as much as it kind of looks buggy and silly as a fly, it's that's a super effective pattern um, as an emerger. Okay, um, yeah, that is our that is our sulfur emerger. Don't hesitate. Tie a few of these. Get them put in your box and try some different color combos. Uh, don't always go yellow on the underside. Maybe go ahead and try some brown or some olive. Olive is probably actually my favorite go-to. It kind of covers more color ranges or even a gray. Um, gray is very much like an Adam's color for, for a dry fly. Um, purple. Purple. Fish purple love is, purple. Fish love purple. And there you have it, guys. That is the sulfur merger. Just like that. Just like that. Yeah, yeah. Somehow, I'm really slacking on the music department. <laughs> know, all, things, all things. All things. All things have just been it's really okay. slacking. It's okay. But we'll just throw this song in and say, hey, why don't you just keep playing some songs? Maybe yeah. we want this song, Hum With Me. That's what it's called. <laughs> hum With Me. Hum With Me. Hum, nice. hum, hum, hum. Hmm. All right, folks. So Gene's in the house. Mr. Accolini? There he is. Yes. The. Do you want the goodness? Oh, man. Do you want the goodness? Come on, come on, come on back. There it is. Tight. There tight we are. and bright. We're back. Super cool. Super, you tied that pretty good. You were, you were like, man, this isn't gonna. It's so funny when you look over and you see how f small the fly is. <laughs> yeah, compared to what and then how the large screen. it is yeah, in the camera. It's actually quite small. Um, so yeah, that turn. You know, they always turn out. I don't know. Well, under pressure. It's because I pressure. whip you. It's true. 
I whip it's you. Kinda... I beat you. Yeah, it's 2022 guide licensing rollout. Oh, yeah, Gene. That's the not... worst part is the unknown. Like, we talk about so many things. Yeah. It's like, what is it actually so going to be? So many things there. Uh, Isaac Exner, we just tied the sulfur emerger, and the next fly that we're going to tie show the, the, I'll show you a the picture Kenny here. Lockwood streamer. So we're going to tie that back. shortly, but Isaac, if you have not gotten a bingo card, I highly suggest that you head over here and grab yourself a bingo card. Where do you get your bingo cards? They're right there because we're about to play some bingo, bingo. but I got to show you guys what you could well, you win at bingo. Well, first of all, as I promised, stickers. Oh, yeah. Bruce... <laughs> Layoff <laughs> stickers Everybody loves from stickers. our friends at Watermaster because Watermaster sponsors Flyingo, and I do want to kind of talk about Watermaster a little yeah. bit today, a little bit more, and then our friends at Fishpond send up some sweet stickers. Yeah, so that's also mm. here. Not just stickers. Inside. They sent up a lot of stuff to give away. They sent up a lot of stuff to give away. Yeah. And then it's going to come in this cozy. So this is what you would normally think that you would. Hey, I tuned into the show and I won. But this is different at Thursday Night Live, folks, yeah. because our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop have also added this really cool tacky day pack, twice as nice, and it is a little fly box. The, uh, the tacky, the silicone, I believe they're waterproof. And our friends at Shore Fishing, they have put together a $100 in fly tying material, uh, a whole bag of it in here, a bunch of different stuff. So this is also going to go in it, right? And then you'd be like, hey, that's a really cool giveaway. That's got to be it. Well, there's more. There's more. This is uh, what we call a fly dock yeah. from Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. It's also made by Tacky, which I think Fish Pond bought Tacky, oh, sort of. They're kind of combined, yeah. And then we got a pack of strike indicators. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Not so poppers. all of these things... And the giveaways, guys, we haven't even really gotten into like there's the stuff. So much stuff out there and out there in the other room. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's tonight's giveaways is not quite a bunch of stuff. <laughs> See? He stops. Oh wait, me. there's more. But then you thought, that's really cool, Dana. I want to play bingo. And then you <laughs> followed the link below over there and you went and got a bingo card. And then I showed you this. From our friends at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, a unbelievable brown trout. It's awesome. Tuke. Rip so your water awesome. Tuke. Yeah, and that's then, awesome. And then, once I added this, you got your wife to go get a bingo card. <laughs> I can I can see the the bingo cards popping oh, up. Oh yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so awesome. I know the truth. I know it's the truth. You know it's the truth. Um, and and then I added Ooh, some float some root. of this. So, nope, this is what, is what we call. Not perfect. It's basically oh, yeah. super saliva. Yeah, super saliva. So uh, really key for saltwater fishermen because those knots, it's just great. It sets them, bonds them, mm -hmm. really cool stuff. So yeah. all the stuff. That's quite the All the stuff is going to come to you free of charge if you win bingo tonight. Yeah. Hey, Andy, Eli would like to know what that tool is. Well, that little tool that I've got right here. I don't know, it's hard to see at the moment. But this tool, it, this one's made by Umqua, but all it is is that it's called a half hitch tool. It's that it's literally, I mean, for years I used a pen and I pulled the pen apart, used like a big, a big pen. pen yeah. It's not anything, but this one's a little bit easier because the holes are smaller, kind of more designed to go over the hooks, uh, the hook eye. And But yeah, that's what it's called, half hitch tool. Yeah. All right. Here, Gene. Blake, what are you disappointed in? Talk to me. <laughs> I'm probably letting him down on the music. Probably. Yeah. Bruce, you could use some more stickers than a fly box. Love the beanie. So in Canada, we call that a toque. Mm -hmm. T O Q U E. So everybody's probably like, what are they talking about? <laughs> it's a beanie. And up here, we call it a toque. A, toque. a winter hat. A winter hat. Yes. Allison's here for bingo. Yes. Thanks, Colin, at Rocky yeah. Mountain Fly Shop. So make sure you guys head over. Get your bingo cards because we're going to play. A little short video from uh, Fly Fishing Academy on how to take pictures of fish from a drift boat. Mm -hmm. A big reason I want to talk about this is because there's a lot of quote-unquote virtue signaling with people saying, 
keep fish wet and what does that mean? Well, I personally think that there's no actual formula for that other than time on water and understanding water temperature, ambient air temperature, how long you fought the fish, but don't virtue signal and say, we don't take pictures of fish out of water. And then all of a sudden you get a big fish and you're like, we now oh, need a fish need picture. A yeah. So, um, <coughs> the truth of it is you can do it safely. And 100%. I'm going to show you that. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we're going to jump into this. We're going to watch this quick. It's about five minutes. Really cool. You get to see Tim. Uh, guiding the boys, Tim, Troy, and Jordan, uh, some of our guides, and some beautiful fish on the Bow River. And then we're going to come back and we're going to jump right into the, the, the bingo. The bingo. But first, guys, first. because I'm wearing the bacon cam, oh, we yeah, might as well talk it. about I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Oh, you right. didn't. There it is. You did not. There it is. You didn't tell me. I didn't tell you. Oh, the whoopie those pies. are whoopie pies, oh, folks. Man. This is like. I baked those, oh. yours truly. Sex in the pan has nothing that, on a whoopie oh, pie. Nothing on a whoopie pie. If oh. you've not had one of my whoopie pies, you're gonna want to fly up yeah. here. And let and, him and whoop your pies. Whoop, whoop your pie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a fact. Whoop him real good. All right, all right, all right. Looks like Mr. Quinn Sunias is in the house. What's up, Quinn? Oh, whoopie pies are good stuff. Oh, but so good. all right, so we're gonna head over. We're gonna watch the movie. Yeah, let's do it. The little film about handling fish. In a drift boat, uh, you can take this for what it is and do the same thing on shore. Yep. But enjoy this. A couple really nice fish. We're going to come back. We're going to play bingo. You guys go grab a beer, whatever you need to do. We'll be right back. Welcome back to another segment of the Fly Fishing Academy. On this segment, we're talking soon. Welcome back to another edition segment, moment in time video of the Fly Fishing Academy. On this video, we're going to be talking about fish handling from a drift boat. There's two ways to do it. Welcome back to another segment video episode. Uh, time and space, space and time, moment in time of the Fly Fishing Academy. On this Fly Fishing Academy segment, we're gonna be talking about fish handling out of a drift boat. How does that take place? What are the best practices? And hey, we're gonna show you a couple really nice fish. So let's head back out to the Bow River and join Tim, Jordan, and Troy as they show us the best handling techniques from a drift boat with a fish. <laughs> That's a nice fish, dude. Look at that beauty. Nice rainbow. It's running right at you. Come here, buddy. Yeah, try to keep leaned away from the boat a little bit. There we go. Nice job. Beauty rainbow. Okay, so Jordan, I'll get you to, if you want to, you can come out with me here. Or we can do it out of the boat. It's either, either or is fine, whatever you're comfortable with. Good. So I'll take the photo. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk through a little bit about um, what I like to call fish first photography, okay? So it's taking care of the fish above all else. Catch and release fishery means we're putting the push fish back in the water. Um, so we want them to have the best result. Picture second to the fish's health, okay? But as you can tell, at this point, the fish has already chosen to jump and be out of the water longer than we've had it in the water. Okay, so he's been in the water the whole time in the net he's safe, keeping his head upstream. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get you to hold the net for a moment, like so. So, how do we get a good picture with these fish? See, lots of guys wanna grab on the tail, cradle like this, it covers up on a trout, it covers up a big portion of their body. Okay, so what we wanna actually do, call my crab claws on the back. So on the back tail, always have my hands showing my palms forward, okay? Crab claw on the tail, brace underneath the belly, just no thumb on the back, because that makes him squirm, okay? So, I'll show you here quickly. So all I'm gonna do is grab on the tail, lift out of the water, we'll come up, one, two, take a shot, right back in the water, okay? So I'll hold the net for you, and get you set up. Yeah, get your hands wet first, that's a great point. Get a quick shot. Look at me. 
right back in the net. Perfect. That's not harming the fish at all, okay? So we're taking our time with him, and before we let him go, we're always gonna make sure that he's ready, he's scrappy, he wants to leave us. And kind of the best way to do that, so I'll do this one for you and show you. Is I put him in the water, see that buck he just gave me? So next time he bucks, I'm gonna let him go. That just tells me he's ready to go. So it's always important to keep his nose upstream. They need that oxygen to be coming over top and through their gills. I don't wanna rush him up and down like that because it's actually giving him periods of where he doesn't have oxygen from the water, okay? He wants to go, just like that. Hey, okay. nice job. I say that was the fish. Jeez, that ran off. There we go. Nice job. Great rainbow, dude. That's a great fish. Holy moly, that's a chunk fest. Look at that. Caught on that awesome tide nymph. So we're gonna do the exactly same thing we did before. I'll take the photo for you. Remember to keep your palms forward, pinch on the tail. As soon as you get the shot, let's set them right back into the water, into the net, okay? Just give me a moment to get my camera ready. Jordan can give us a smile from the back. There we go. First day. Awesome. And right back in the net, just like that. Fish is out of the water, very minimal. We're not concerned about it. Yeah. So if you can let him go, just remember, nose upstream. Wait for a good kick. Just like that, there he goes. Good job, buddy. Nice work. Oh, she's gone again. We just don't want you to put the Apparently. Maybe you're just going to have to come back to me. And it's just me now. And it's just me. All right, so that is what we call fish pictures from a drift boat. Uh, Tim, we were out just doing some uh, media that day. A couple of nice fish. Uh, realized that you can take pictures of fish even when it's somewhat warmer out, but you just got to kind of be uh, cognizant yeah. of the surroundings. Yeah. Uh, check the water temps. We have thermometers that sit inside the water all day. We continually check on the water. We also talk with our clients and we say, hey, if the water gets to a certain degree, we row out. We don't fish anymore. Are you cool with that? Mm -hmm. We also have the conversation about what is their expectations for pictures today? Uh, do they want a picture of every single fish that comes into the net? Or are they just looking for that one fish picture? Or do they just get the first picture and they're good? Yeah. But all that stuff <laughs> is the conversation happens at the start of the day. And then we know how to mitigate that. And we can just explain. And I've never had somebody fight me on mm -hmm. anything like that. No, normally I would say in my boat most of the time, uh, I encourage the, the fact that we get a picture of your first fish, especially if it's your first ever fish. Yeah, exactly. Um, because that's a really important moment. I don't care if it's eight inches long or 28 inches long. Um, get that first picture. And then after that, every fish that that exceeds the size, you know, if it's all of a sudden we caught a 20 incher, now we take a picture of the 20 incher. If we don't catch one over 20 the rest of the day, then, then we're subtle with that. Um, and remember that photography on a boat with your clients all day isn't just fish so there's lots yeah. of opportunity to take other photos that can moments. tell a story so yeah moments also realize what you could see in those photos is that nobody was holding the fish in the boat it was in a place that if the fish were to buck the fish would land in the water yeah super um, important and i'm not saying that doesn't happen pictures in the boat but uh be very cognitive <laughs> Cognitance. Sometimes Cog the fish jump in your boat and you have yeah, no control. That's <laughs> happened multiple times uh, from being hooked. But anyways, it, nobody's perfect. No. Okay. We're not claiming to be perfect. There's just a couple tips there that we thought, hey, this works well. If it's hot out, uh, that day wasn't super hot. That was kind of like yeah, end of September. Yeah. But the idea there was that fish pictures can happen. Be smart. Don't virtue signal about we don't ever take fish pictures in the summer because it's hot out and then catch a big fish and then take a picture of it. Yeah. So uh, it's called integrity. Say what you do. Do what you say. 
Mm -hmm. Be the same person in public as you are in private. I see Mr. James Hicks is in the house, so I just want to give a shout out to him. Yeah. What's, What's up, up, my brother? We will connect on a show sooner than later. <laughs> We're both busy Thursdays. Apparently, he's also doing stuff. Nice. Um, do the fish ever jump over oars? Yes, yeah, Sean. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. <laughs> Often. I thought Tim is perfect. <laughs> what? Tim no, is perfect. sorry, Bill. <laughs> I'm far from perfect. Um, far from perfect. Yeah. So a couple questions here, and then we're going to get to bingos. Um, Ryan, let's get to your question about the drift boat and the winter and stuff like that later. Yeah. And then Jeff said, what time of the year is the Mayfly emerger seen on the water? So to answer that, it's not a time of the year. Mm -hmm. It is during the hatch. Yeah. So basically it's when the Mayfly emerges and it's letting go of its shuck to come out of the water and then it turns into its adult stage and then they mate. So it's this uh, caterpillar to butterfly moment, okay? And it's stuck, it's stuck in the water column and they're super vulnerable. The thing that you have to look for when you're fishing the emerger patterns is the, the, the rise form of the fish. So if you see fish like super splashy, probably not eating emergers. We could talk about what they're eating at a later time if they if you do see the splashy. But the rise form is probably just you just see like the tail come up like this. And you barely you probably don't even see the face most of the time. You porpoise. don't just see like a big old mouth come out and open. You'll just see like the back and then the tail and yeah. then they come back down. And oftentimes people think, I can't figure out what they're eating. I thought it was green drakes or I thought it was a sulfur mayfly and it's not. Yes, it could be, but the stage at which you fish that fly is everything. Mm -hmm. And so next time you're on the water and you see a fish like kind of back and tail coming up, uh, try an emerger yep. and see what happens. Yeah, definitely. There's see a question happens. there from Isaac about how to hold the fish where you wouldn't be harming them. Um, Isaac, that's a, I mean, that's a good question. He's um, only got one hand. <clears throat> only got one hand. Well, the, you're going to have to put a thumb on the back, or, which is, or just cradle in one hand. Montana the style. Montana style. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I mean, really, if your hand's wet and you're not squeezing the fish to death, you're not harming them. You just got to be cognizant of it. Um, just, the technique's the same. It's in the water. It's quick. It's up. You get your shot. You put it back in the water. Yeah. Um, lots of guys, lots of guides in Montana, they never take a two-handed photo. They always just kind of lift it up, cradle it with one hand, point it forward, and that's that. So definitely more of a, yeah. a practice thing. Um, maybe don't practice on the 28-incher, but... Yeah, it's 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 a technique. Um, there's... The, the more you grip the fish, the more it's going to squirm, and it's hard to hold anyways. Yeah. Um, I mean, John's really got it down. I mean, technique is if you does. just don't catch fish, then you don't have to hold them or that's cause them to be It's because he hasn't been up here for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> the going on the worm <laughs> yeah. oh. you gotta beat him yeah. solid dude 100 percent. okay so yeah cam says if you hear him go that means yeah. you're probably squeezing them but they sometimes do that even in the net like yeah um anyways the idea here was to just try and trigger the conversation about safe fish handling mm -hmm. and understanding that it actually is possible to take safe fish photos Please don't be the person online that goes around and, and badgers people for taking pictures. You, you don't know what the conditions were. You might think it was hot. You might whatever. Um, it doesn't doesn't win any friends that way. No. So there's there's a lot of things that take place when a fish is being photographed. And some people are just horrible at it. They drag them on the rocks and I want to punch them in yeah, the nose. There's obvious things to not do. For um, sure, but. but I think by teaching people and a lot of people that I've talked to on the river, and I said, why are you doing that? And they have no idea. So yeah, start with a know. little bit of kindness and a little bit of education and then punch him in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after, you give him like a Shortly. brief second. I think <laughs> the rule of thumb is three seconds. Three seconds, that, yeah. If they're yeah. still looking at you cross-eyed. Okay, right, let's see. Yeah, we got to get into bingo <laughs> yeah, let's here. Yeah, some so. bingo. Some good prizes uh, to win. What I got to do is head over <clears> here. And so we yeah. call. So yeah, we're going to go four corners again, folks. Pull out your bingo cards. Four corners. Four corners. A thing. huge thank you to Watermaster. They are the sponsor of our Flying Go. Yes. Um, yeah, we wouldn't be having this without them, so it's awesome. 100%. If you don't know what a Watermaster is, uh, their We're website is... 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the two man. Hello, Tim. Let's this go way. this way. Oh, no, this way. Oh, no, I'm Let's going back. Go. No, nope, we're opposing. <laughs> Let's go this way. <laughs> Hey, row, row, I never even thought row. of this when I built <laughs> this, is, this. This is awesome. This is so cool. Oh, man. What happens if we row at each other? It's just like... I'm rowing this way. Oh, man. That's great. All right. <gasps> okay, so these, these rafts, they pack up into a backpack. You can hike them in. They're super cool. I, what I'm going to do in the next couple episodes is I'm going to blow one up and stick it behind us here so that you guys can see. Yeah. There is, like it says, there's imitations out there. And they, these things are like bomb proof. And the last thing that you want to fall apart on you in the river is your waders, your boots, and your craft. Mm -hmm. Your rod breaks, yeah, cool. You can still get home safe. But if your water, or if your raft, your, <laughs> your knockoff raft. Sinks, you're in trouble. Yeah, the burp may give you, okay. All right, so there's the first four calls because it takes a bit of time for everybody to get going. Yep. But once you get bingo, you just yell bingo. We're looking for four corners and it says it right there. Four corners to win. And when you win, you say bingo, and then you say what your your ID on your bingo card is, and then we yeah. check it, and we just show it up right here. The next call is Fly Fish and Bow River. Fly Fish River. So the other calls, the Grizzly Raft and the Bruin Raft, they are uh, a series of rafts by Watermaster. And if you go over to the website, bigskyinflatables.net, you can check out all the stuff that comes with it. And uh, yeah. I'm excited this summer to do more exploring mm -hmm. with the Watermaster. Got and a couple to do, so. I haven't talked to you about this, but we've uh, been chatting with somebody about an experience. Oh. And horses and Watermasters and all that stuff. I like horses. Yes. Sounds good. But uh, all right, any bingos? Chris? The other thing about this here, guys, is don't be offended but often when there's one bingo there's two or three yeah and, and we have a tiebreaker we have a tiebreaker we'll show you how it works so don't yeah don't freak out all right chris nelson has a water master and he yeah. totally agrees that they are the best craft i got the center four covered five corners yes sean's got the circle wizard <laughs> bingo again oh, and now man. i'm back to drinking the 88 wave pool tropical IPA. That's a good one. All right, simple Chernobyl. And why we wait when we throw it up is because through the different platforms, there is a bit of a de delay. 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 Which one of those rafts is the two person? Is it the Bruin? I think it's the Bruin. Yeah, which is yeah. cool to have the opportunity to take another person it's on it. It's considered you. almost a three person. Yeah. Yeah, and there's seats on them. Uh, I could be so on this one, your feet sit down in the middle. Uh, super fun. Like, really. Yeah, really really well thought out. Um, all right. What do we got Yes next? to an outfitting trip on horseback. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. It's, I forgot to tell you about it, yeah, but I will. Tell. Three or four. Dougie. Oh. Shop vac. Mike, one. Well, we know Mike's not going to win with the call shop vac. No. He needs three more. Three more. Shop vac. Shoppity vac. I'm going empty, 0 for 4. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Maybe I'm calling the wrong game, but Hackle Beetle is call number 8. Hackle Beetle. You guys can show it up here. There's a lot of bingo cards downloaded. There's, There's gonna 130. Like, oof. It's going to be probably 10 bingos all at once. Yeah. It's going to be bingo, 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 add a bingo. And then tell us also which call number your bingo was on. Yeah, we need to know so that. You see right there, it says call 7 shop vac. Because if someone calls bingo and they're number eight and you came on seven, oh, we uh, got some Darren's card sucks. Troy Tracy, Ooh. three or four. Two, three or fours. Yeah. Well, actually, John, I haven't refreshed this. Shh. <laughs> 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 you just keep playing, John. <laughs> you just, you just tell us when you win. Okay, oh, Kodiak Raft. I think the Kodiak might be the. Kodiak? Is yeah, that I should one? know yeah. more. I know. Terrible. I'm well, Hillbilly, you don't suck at bingo. Your bingo card sucks. One more. Ryan Pacific. All right, folks. This is what we call Flying Go, brought to you from our friends at Watermaster. Watermaster Rafts. Holy crap, 0 for 9 last week. And so someone asked about... Yeah, so this hasn't refreshed since the start of the show. I think there's about 190. <laughs> John's going to be like, why am I 191? Oh, <laughs> uh, man. Okay. Hillbilly has on. Ooh. 
Mind you, I don't have one, so I guess I... Oh, well, William, why don't you go get a card? Yeah, go get one. All right, all right, all right. Oh, bingo. Hillbilly called bingo. Hillbilly, all right. There he is. Everything but. Uh, yeah, so Hillbilly, let us know what your call number was and let us know what your bingo ID is. Did he just say... I thought he said he sucked at bingo. <laughs> I know. Uh, let's see. Zero corner so far. And then all of a sudden he calls bingo. Oh, maybe uh, his son's probably got a card, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Billy got bingo. Okay, we Let's need to know. Out. We'll patiently await in your call to know if you're the winner. It's the Bruin. The Bruin is the two, the two to three two. person. The two to three, right. yeah. The Bruin. I should know that. Call 10, <sighs> card 150. It's my... Bu- That's fine. That is totally fine. Yeah. Let's see. Let's... I think you should tell your buddy it was your card. All let's right, see let's it. Let's see it up here. View card. Bammo. That's bingo. a bingo, folks. Bingo, Hillbilly's bingo, bingo. got the bingo. Nice job, Andy. Uh, William, you get your card at flyfishingbowriver.com slash Thursday Night Live. And it's good for, un- it'd be good for next week as well. Yeah. It might, they might be good for a long time. I haven't decided. <laughs> That's awesome, All right. buddy. We'll come drop that off at your place. Card 150. Look like this. Good job, nice Mr. Job, Hillbilly. Andy. Winner, winner, buddy. Okay, guys. Well, that's how bingo works. And the fact is um, the more people that tune in, the bigger the bingo prizes get. Just so you guys know how I decide what goes out for bingos. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, Michael. You should definitely get a card one day. Worth winning. Uh, yeah, it's easy. You just got to like put your name and email, and they email you a card. Super simple. That's as easy as one, two, three. Um, all right. All right. Let's we got another say time. thanks to all our friends yeah. who make this possible. But, Tim, why don't you tell everybody what they need to get strung up in their bobbin? Yes. So, guys, the Jim next, hasn't passed out. <laughs> next fly on the docket. We have the Ken Lockwood streamer, uh, classic great streamer. We are going to tie this with a black thread. Uh, I would prefer that you use a little bit thicker thread as we're going to be tying in some bucktail. Um, so I'm using a 140. Comparison would be like a 6 aught, 3 aught. Okay, and doing black. All right. Give us there one minute it. to say thanks to all the fine folks that make this night possible for us and you guys, and we'll be right back ready to tie. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, The good news is that your camera is still it's on. It's still on. I think it, it has a heat sensor. Yeah, I mean, it's probably, that's <laughs> definitely what it is. It's definitely. Uh, if the, I'm about to turn off, too. I'm going to go climb in that Yeti cooler over there yeah, for a little uh, break. Uh, anyways, okay. something super cool, guys. I'm going to show you real quick here. We got Mr. Andy. He does one. All of him and his oh, neighbors yeah. hanging out. Shout out together. to the hillbillies. Yeah, buddy. That's so awesome. Boom. That makes Knuckles. us so happy to see. That's what it's about. That is what it's about. Is the fam. And the fam and the extended fam. The extended fam. Uh, so we cool. said that at the beginning. You're going to learn to tie some flies. You're going to learn some stuff about fishing. But most importantly, hopefully you take a few things away today that make you a better person. Yeah. And then you can go to your neighbor and help make them a better person. Yeah. So, well, back to tying some flies and Let's making you a better fisherman. Jim Crawford asked the question. He's going to fish the warm salt. How heavy of a leader? Uh, what are you fishing for? We had this conversation the other day, but I told him to bring it up tonight because it's a good one. 
And basically, I wouldn't use a liter. I would just use straight floral. Um, 10 to 80 pounds, depend, you know, at, at one point how big are the fish. But like we, like I told them earlier is remember folks, the salt water has a lot of uh, coral typically. And uh, are those fish going to wrap themselves around something? Mm-hmm. Remember that trigger fish that <laughs> he had to dive under oh, the water man. for? I do remember. Yeah. Straight so. under. Anyways, um, 10 to 80, yeah. I guess at one point you got to decide how big are the fish you're going after, but straight leader, six feet. Um, and lots of people for uh, permanent and bonefish, specifically those two, because they are a lot shyer of a fish. Go they a actually, lot longer they and do, smaller. They actually do a tapered floral leader that might be maybe 15 pounds or something. Yeah. Um, you risk maybe losing the fish, but you also, with a piece of 80-pound floral, you're probably not going to catch that fish because they can see it. Versus yeah. like a barracuda doesn't and Joel, give. Joel House, uh, massive salt water. He lives down there. So, oh, yeah. Joel uh, would know. He will tell you. Jim James, William Crawford. Mm-hmm. It's hot in here. It is warm it's in here. It's warm. Why is it warm in here? You got a toque on your head. I ain't helping. Uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Let the, let the hair Okay, well, let's you. get back to tying. Let's do it. All right, guys. So we are not tying that fly. Give me a moment here. I'm going to change over mics. He will get me back on this one. There we go. Okay, so we are going to tie the Ken Lockwood streamer. It is a classic um <clears throat> very much in set in the classic stage of the hair wing flies and it is a good one um it is very effective for trout we are we are tying this in a super small size too and and that's kind of in in a way showing you that this doesn't have to be streamers don't have to be big okay um streamers are meant to imitate bait fish um, or other little bugs that are swimming in the water so don't have to overdo it on size all the time. People think a streamer fishing is an exhausting thing to do and super tough. It doesn't always have to be if you are fishing a smaller streamer. You could fish a, this size of streamer on a five weight all day long without issue, okay? Unweighted, small, um, lots of versatile uses for it. This is an unweighted streamer, so we're gonna tie it in that fashion. This one has never been tied with weight that I that I know of in the, in the research I did on it. Um, but yeah, so let's get it, let's get into it. So if you go back and grab your kit, Again, coming back to my season four, episode five, I have this one here. It's got this red yarn in it, okay? It's gonna be our trigger to know that that's the right one. So let's go ahead, again, be careful as you're opening it because that hook is in there. Two hooks are in there because you have enough to tie two flies here and you don't want it to go all over the place. Go ahead and pull it out. First off, you're gonna have your own tie, or own fly tied in there. That's what this sucker is gonna look like. And we're gonna take you through and show you how to make it look that good. All right, set that one aside. I'm gonna pull all these materials out, grab that hook, and get it set in the vise. And just be careful, because there are some smaller materials in this one. You've got a couple pieces of um, that silver tinsel. You don't wanna lose that either. So I'm gonna come in here, really make sure guys, especially when you're tying streamers and you got bigger materials on them and you're gonna be pulling a little harder, that you get a really good, strong, sec- uh, secure hook in your vise, okay? You don't want that to go anywhere. Always a good check is to basically just rub your finger on it. If it doesn't move at all, you know you've probably got it <clears throat> right where you need it. Okay, so we're gonna come in here with some of this black UTC or whatever you are using. I'm using black UTC 140. I like a little bit heavier thread when dealing with any type of hair. I'm gonna start it back here. I'm gonna take a few wraps forward before snipping out that tag. Um, Right off the hop here, I'm going to take this silver tinsel that we have in your kit and we are going to take a nice little securing wrap, get that locked in, and we are going to work that back all the way by itself, just to the top of the hook bend, guys. We don't want to go into the hook bend. I'm going to open spiral my thread back up, keeping it nice and even. And basically right away guys we're going to get on this red yarn this is a really quick tie guys you could tie a ton of these in no time um, really quick one what we're going to do is we're going to grab that yarn i'm just going to cut it off so it's even to start with and if you pull too hard on this guys it is yarn so it's going to separate on you um, so what i want you to do is take that let's tie that in right here pull it nice and tight anchor that tag Now I'm gonna keep it, again, don't pull too tight when you do this because you don't want it to tear. Keep it right on top, nice even wraps as I go back, keeping it right on top of the hook. Now when I get back to where I left my tinsel, okay, 
Now I'm gonna take some nice even wraps forward. I wanna even out the underbody, so nice touching wraps. I'm gonna bring that forward, leaving about a hook eye to a hook eye and a half behind the actual hook eye. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put a half hitch just to make sure I'm securing that, it's not going anywhere. Now I'm gonna take that, um, that yarn, I'm gonna pull it tight, but I'm not gonna pull so hard that it's gonna separate or break or pull apart, just keeping it taut, okay? Keeping it nice and tight, keeping that even underbody appearance. So nice touching wraps as we move forward, making sure that we don't ex have any of that open black thread exposed. So just a quick note, Bill Borland said, I joined late, will this be put up to watch later? So every episode is stored on YouTube. <coughs> it's also resides on Facebook. Uh, but Bill, you can go back and watch every live stream for the past four years. But what you can also watch now is both of the patterns tonight are under quick ties. And at 930 uh, Mountain Standard Time, those quick ties will go live. So you can watch those later as many times as you want. If you don't want to get into the whole BS of the show uh, and the ramble ramble, you can just quickly go watch the quick ties yeah. and tie these flies. Uh, that's a great point. Um, and hopefully you guys in, are enjoying those quick ties. I encourage you to go watch them. It's a really a condensed version of these flies and it's a great way of going back and just pause, through pause quick. whenever yeah. you need it. It would virtually be like going on YouTube and just watching somebody tie a fly. Um, that's how we've done it. And we wanted to provide kind of both options for you guys. Cause maybe some people in here don't want to watch a show. They just want to have the opportunity to buy a kit and tie the flies. So there's that for you as well. So what I've done is I've come in here, I've taken that yarn and I have secured it with my thread. I'm going to come in here and trim it out. Set that aside to tie your next one as well. I'm gonna get rid of any of these extra little bits that are kind of out and about. Now I'm gonna throw another half hitch here. I'm gonna get my thread out of the way over on my cradle. I really like to use um, my rotary function on the vise for this one because I can keep a really nice even, evenly spaced out tinsel wrap. So I don't change the angle of my hand at all. I simply rotate my vise. Brings me right up to here. So now I got that really nice, even spaced out. I'm gonna come in here, take a wrap be behind, in front, behind, in front, secure it down. Okay, so that's not going anywhere. If you don't really secure that, guys, and you snip it out, it's gonna kind of unwind and oh, pull back off. bad. And it's just irritating. And that material is kind of slippery too, Super slippery. against your thread. It is, you are right. Take that tinsel, set it aside, you can use it on your next fly. Okay, now I'm gonna come back and just really drive that down, make sure that that's not gonna go anywhere. I'm gonna cord my thread back up again. So the next thing we're gonna put in here, guys, is actually bucktail, black bucktail. Um, the, two, the two ways it's tied is either with bucktail or with black bear or polar bear. So the bear option's there. If it's polar bear, it's obviously gotta be um, dyed black uh, or the black bear is unnatural. Um, both of those hairs work really well as well, but more, more commonly found, you have your bucktail. So I'm gonna take, I brought a bucktail for you here. I'm gonna show you um, where we took your hair from because there is a difference on a, on a, on a bucktail as to where you wanna actually get your hair, um, depending on what you're tying. So let's say we're talking about tying a clouser, something where we want those hairs to lie flat and not to flare at all. I come up to the tip of my bucktail, okay? Tip of my bucktail is where all of that um, super flat, not hollow at all, um, very dense hair sits up there and it'll lay flat in the water for you. It'll still move, but it's not gonna flare when I pull tight on it. As I move down the bucktail and I get all the way to the base where it would attach to the, to the body of the deer, these hairs down here are extremely hollow, okay? They, if I put thread on them and pull tight, they'll flare really high. So on this fly, we want a slight flare, but we don't want it to be overdone. So I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle. Okay, so somewhere in the middle um, portion of this tail is where, where I would take those um, that hair from because I know it's not going to over flare, but it's still going to have a little bit of flare, which is what I want. So I'll just go grab a pinch of this right now, just to kind of show you. And it can be, it isn't a super easy thing to stack bucktail because bucktail likes to, um, unfortunately, it the tips like to come. It's like barbecue brush wiry. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a super funny wiry material. Um, doesn't always do, I took way too much here, but I'm just gonna do it for showing you. 
Um, so take a uh, about a I don't you really don't need much guys. This is a this tiny fly is best tied sparsely. Yeah, it's just meant to give a little bit of profile. So I'm just cleaning this out, but I'm gonna get rid of most of this after I stack it. I like leaving a little extra together for the stacking process because it just makes it a little bit easier to get it guided into the hair stacker. So um, at least with the shore hair stackers, we've got a couple options. We got this big Bertha here, or we have the smaller one here. I use the smaller one for that first fly. I'm gonna use the bigger one for this. Has a little bit wider mouth. Go ahead and get the tips of that bucktail um, into that hair stacker, like so. Okay, give it a good stack. Again, like we did the last time, we want the base of the hair stacker to be facing down the fly. So when I pull that out, I have all those tips perfectly aligned and probably all the other fuzz that was in the bottom of theirs comes out as well. Okay, so my tips are nice and aligned. Um, this is a really cool skill, guys, to learn is handling deer hair after you stack it because you don't have to stack it 10 times. So I can switch hands multiple times and those tips are stay, still stay aligned. Okay, you just got to be really careful about how you do it always being conscious that you're not letting go with too much tension in any way shape or form okay so this is the back here i'm going to pull out all the long ones that are way out i'm still going to look at that i still know that's way too much hair so i'm going to back it off i'm going to take a good chunk of it out still maintain those tips i'm going to check that again ah, i'm okay with that but i'm going to take just a little bit more out because like dana said best tied sparse don't overdo it on this one okay um now what i'm going to do yeah, I like this amount. This I see Jen good. Lyle just showed up, and she's ripping on your duster. Maybe duster. Jen Lyle should have been here at the start. Uh, she could have rode the duster. Go back and watch the yes, the <laughs> You're going to want to watch the beginning of the show. <laughs> I'm just saying, quick ties are cool, but you don't get asthma. You don't get asthma. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I had a headache from laughing oh, at man. you so hard. Oh, it was so good. <laughs> I got to go back and watch it, dude. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh Okay guys, so what I'm gonna do here is, um, to first off, you can see I have weight, it's super long. Okay, it's longer than I need. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go off and square this off a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna do it over, I'll pretend to cut it here and then cut it over my basket. But I'm gonna square that off. Still gonna be long, but I, I want it square. I thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. My vacuum thanks you. <laughs> now you'll notice I've changed hands of this hair how many times and it's still perfectly 18, aligned. I was counting. 18, oof, good counter. Um, so what I'm going to do here, guys. Good I'm, song. I think I've upped my game. It's getting better. See, I come in hot. At least there's music. Because I was playing the song because <laughs> I was hot. And it's hot in here. And then I crap the bed in the middle of the show. And I'm coming in hot to end the show. Beauty. I like also want to give away one more thing at the end of the show. Ooh. Stay tuned, obviously, guys. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I'm going to measure off the front of the eye. Because it's going to be my perfect measuring point. I want this to extend about we're going to measure off let's say the hook point to the shaft of the hook we call that the hook gap i want it to be about as wide as the hook gap distance off the back so if i lay it flat to belt that off the back i'm going to tip it back up at a 45 degree angle switch hands so you can see what it looks like at the front i've kind of pushed it into the into the head and split it so that if i pushed hard the eye of the hook would come right through the middle like that okay so i've got it at that 45 I'm gonna again do that same for me, clockwise spin, if you're right-handed, counterclockwise spin, it's gonna cause that thread to jump rearward, grab that hair, pinch it tight so it stays right up on top of the hook. Okay, take a few wraps. I'm gonna let go. Look at that. Look okay. at that. Just like Ben says that you need a shirt that says mustache rides for a nickel back. <laughs> for a nickel back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I awesome. added the back, but hey, I mean. whatever. It just, I was thinking, take one of your Nickelback concert tour shirts you got. Oh, yeah, all those ones. And we can scratch off back, and then I can write on mustache rides for a nickel. Perfect. Saves us, an, <laughs> it saves us an ink, and it's a shirt you don't yeah. wear anymore. Yeah. What I mean, tour did you did you watch them on? All of them. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. It's hard to count. That's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> So guys, we're gonna take that hair, we're gonna pull it back up, we're gonna take a few wraps underneath it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in. This is why I left a little bit of length on it so I can cut it at a 45 degree angle, trim it out like so. And why would you do that? Trim it out. So and why would you shoot it on a 45? Because now I have a nice tape. Nice ramp down to the eye. Nice hook. ramp down to the hook. Okay. So because so what happens if you don't, you'll keep slipping off because it'll be like a cliff. It'll be like a cliff. A ledge. Yeah, you don't want that. 
So guys, that's what I'm left with currently, okay? I like how that flared. Like I said, I don't want an over flare. I don't want that hair standing up like here. That's obviously all of a sudden looks like some type of dry fly. I want it to flare. I don't know, give me a degree, but something like that. Oh, 29 to 32. 29 to 32, he's got it. That's where we want our flare to be, okay? Do you want those degrees with COVID or without? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Numbers and COVID don't seem to match. Yeah. Flip that upside down. We're gonna put in the last piece of this fly, okay? We're gonna head on over to that white feather we have for you there. This is a um, saddle hackle, super inexpensive feather. Can be used as a tail in big streamers, can be used for lots of things, tail fibers for other flies. Um, but today we're gonna use it as the um, gill or the throat. So I'm gonna come down here to where all this fluffy junk is. I'm gonna peel it out. It's just so I'm not tempted to grab it and use it because we do not want that. But what we do want is that stuff right there that's just in front of the fluff, okay? So I'm gonna take a decent amount here. I'm gonna take, if I have to pull some out, I pull some out. The key here is guys, you kind of isolate it like so. Come in, grab it with your fingertips, keeping the tips aligned. So you can see there, I still the stem's still on, but I've aligned the, the tips and I tear it off. Now you can see the butts are pretty much all aligned too. So when I come back here and transition it and I get a look, they should be fairly aligned and they are. Okay, that's what we're hoping for. So now I'm gonna tie this in right here on the underside and I want this, um, the last one we wanted to extend um, back behind the fly. This one, I want the white tips to extend right to the edge of the hook point. Okay, so if the hook point's right there. They're just extending to it perfectly. I'm gonna switch my hands over, pinch it there so it stays right on the bottom. Come in here, take a thread wrap, one, two, three, and let go, don't go overdo it, because then I'm gonna come in here, and I'm gonna use the butt of those feather fibers to center it on top again, or on, well, top, or the bottom, I guess you would say. Um, take some thread wraps forward, like so, covering that up, pull tight. I'm gonna come in here and trim this out. Again, almost at that 45. And any little guys that didn't wanna cooperate, and we're gonna cover, cover all of that up like so. And if you did that properly, that throat or gill should be sitting right on the bottom. Looking like that, looking sexy. Okay, so I'm gonna cord up my thread. All it cord just means I'm gonna spin my bobbin so it gets uh, nice and tight and small. And I'm gonna come up here right behind the hair. And now kind of the, the key to finishing this is the proper whip finish. So we're gonna take our whip finish tool we're gonna do a three or four turn whip finish. And as we whip finish, we're gonna go down the ramp. Okay, so it's gonna end with the knot at the bottom. So I come in here, take my first wrap, one, two, moving down, three, let's go four, slide it out, pull tight, just like that. I'm very happy with that. I'm gonna put a little bit of resin on here because we want this head to be nice and shiny. In the olden golden days, they would have had to use different types of resins. But for us, we have the advantage of UV resin. So we're gonna go back to that bone dry. I'm gonna just touch it, just a light coating right up against that hair all the way around. Touching all those threads, we certainly want to get as many fish out of this as we can without it coming undone. I'm gonna hit that with my torch, let that cure for a few seconds. And there you have it folks, that is our Ken Lockwood streamer. Um, a great one, it's simple, and I know it's not flashy and articulated and rabid zonk or this, that. Put a few of these in your box, trust me. If nothing else, trail it behind another streamer. It's unweighted. Give it a try. I bet you're going to be surprised what you see. <coughs> oh, you got hot. Because hot. Tim got hot, we had to turn him back on. So, you know, that's just another thing that we have to check into this week, folks, is why does Tim camera... We have so the hot. same cameras and yet mine turns off and yours does. Well, that's just the thing of heat. So that is a hair wing fly known as the Ken Lockwood streamer. I like it. Have you fished it or have you fished anything like it? Yeah. We could say the Clouser or the, uh, what's the other one? Like a Clouser with half Deceiver half. or half and half. Half, half. half or Deceiver, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, these are great guys. Variations. This is a still water. Variations. Also a very good still water fly. If you're on the lakes, try it out. Yeah, I like it. I yeah. actually really like that fly. I do. And it's I'm good to curious. learn those techniques. Yeah. A lot of good streamers this year. A lot of good foam flies. Mm -hmm. And some really cool dry flies. Speaking of cool dry flies, what's next week? Yeah, the really funky one the called Royal. the Muda Puda. The Muda Puda. If, if you've never seen or tied it, um, join the club. <laughs> No, I've died it a few times. <laughs>
It is a cool haven't, fly. Haven't fished it though. I've but, only fished it on a pond and it actually crushed. I was very surprised. So. But uh, I actually did fish something very similar and it was in a squala pattern. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. did not know the name was Muda Puda. Muda Puda. So next week we call it Set the Muda. And then, and then what we need to do, you want to switch, don't you? I'd like you to switch as well. I want to get back to this beauty. <laughs> okay. So what I want to do is remind you guys what is the the weeks to come because people were asking oh, yeah. questions and yeah. I want to give away something. So hold tight. Don't everybody leave. How about I move my mouse off there? Such a cool fly. The Muda Buddha. Tim's the fly master. <laughs> Looks super easy until you try it yourself. Oh, thanks, Andy. I try. All right. Well, it's bad joke Doug time. And the answer oh. is we don't know. But the question is, what are sharks two most favorite words? Oh. I don't know. Tell me. Tell me more. Tell me. Talk to me, goose. Talk to me, goose. All right. All right. Baby, baby shark. shark. Baby <laughs> shark. Da -dark, da -dark, da -dark, da -dark. You know what song we got going on in our house? It's off of a new Disney movie. Oh, uh, is it Encanto? Oh, and yeah. it's like something about Rufus or Bruno. It's Bruno. There's something about Bruno. Don't talk about Bruno. Don't talk or about Bruno. No, 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 no. Bruno. Yeah. Man so anyways, overboard. Man overboard is. The that's <laughs> what happens at our house at 7 a.m. every single morning. We get the Bruno song. <laughs> All right. So Terry finally got sharks, one. Sharks' two favorite words are man overboard. Man overboard. <laughs> cool. Yummy, yummy. Let's have a moment of silence. Moment of silence for the man. So what we're planning for tracks, if anybody's still here that cares, I need you guys to know we're going to plan the first Thursday of every month. And so what that'll put us at is February 3rd. And February 3rd, folks, is our next dress-up night, and it is called 70s Night. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. So that fly there is a disaster, just so you guys know, the streamer. <laughs> so it's probably just going to be a lot of drinking. So yeah. 70s night on the 3rd. Two weeks away? February, the first Thursday. In February, we'll do tracks again, and we'll have it on the big screen. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool. So Richard says, tell me about the torch. What torch? Oh, yeah. So you're probably referring to our UV torch. Um, this one specifically actually was donated by Blake to us. Again. Um, yeah, but there's lots of different UV torches out there. But like all things in life, not all things are the same or of the same quality. Um, this UV torch is actually amazing. But there's different brands make different uh, lumens, they will say, which are more highly intense UV light which will cure something faster, or maybe the uh, early crappy one won't actually cure it at all. It'll always be tacky, which is kind of crummy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now Also, the UV resin that you use, I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. That yeah. solar ed stuff, has, they have nothing to do with the show, um, but, but it's dude, epic. Yeah. Just so you guys know, any of the sponsors that are part of our show are here because we truly believe in what they do, what they stand for, and the products that they have. So we're not going to just take on somebody to try to like uh, push something towards you guys. We truly uh, research and search out and that's stuff that we use. So if Solarez wanted to jump on board, we'd say yes, because they are awesome. Their stuff is awesome. And like mm -hmm. Tim said, the UV light and the resin to add to that, if it's tacky, it sucks. But yeah. that UV resin, the Solarez stuff and this awesome light, it just like, boom, it's perfect. So. Yeah makes a huge difference yeah um i saw brent struthers had a question for us he was curious how this fly differed from the doc spratly um so <clears throat> they are tied in very similar fashion brent um the only difference is the doc spratly is a still water fly originally designed to imitate a um help me out here it's um Sorry, the what? I damsel was fly yeah. is what it's meant to imitate. Um, it's tied with some peacock curl and a couple <laughs> things, but the design of it is very similar. This one tied is more supposed to be a minnow pattern, um, but you're right. They are very similar. I would fish them exactly the same, just representing slightly different um, bugs. Yeah. So make sure, guys, hey, you dress up. We give away good prizes. And that night, the bingos are going to be there still. Mm -hmm. They'll be average, but the prize for the best costume is going to be epic. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, Bryce said, good point. Some of the UV resin cures the different UV wavelengths. Yeah. So 
Uh, the solarized light is good. So, and it does like, if you match your UV resin to your light is normally the best match. Yeah. So if you're tying with loon UV stuff, um, I'm telling you, if you try, if you try to use a solar as light with it, it is not, it's not the right mix or vice versa. Yeah. Um, often they're kind of designed for their own curing. Um, what's that other resin? It's it came over from vision, the vision fly fishing people, but I can't remember oh, what it's called. Um, um they really uh, tried to break in over here. Elmer's glue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Help I can't out, guys. Remember. If you can remember, it's it's actually super popular coming up, and it is good. I find it a bit confusing because there's so many color variations, thickness variations. I like it simple and to know what it does. Uh, I have heard good things about that stuff, but haven't yeah. used it personally. So easy bone solarize the bone dry. So solarize makes a few different like medium thick, but this bone dry is yeah, like that's like a medium a medium or a thin. They would call this thin, but it's not thin. But this yeah. bone dry, this one here. Gluff. Is it called Gluff? <clears throat> no, nope, that's wrong. Oh, Gulf. That's Gulf. what it is. Gulf. Gulf. Here. Gulf shell, yeah. Um, the bone dry solarize is my favorite because all it does is it actually simulates resin. So it's so thin that it'll get into the fiber that you want or the head or whatever, and then you just cure it and it's done. There's no wait time in the dry. Yeah. Um, some people say it has an odd smell or it has... Um, some people say it, you know, like it's tacky if you don't cure it properly. I haven't had those issues because of, of my combination of light to that. But what yeah. lumen would you recommend? I don't know what Blake sent us, but these are, I don't know. they're not even in the fly tying world. No. But they're pretty epic. Um, Loon has a really good light. The, the, the high end Loon one, it's like 150 yeah. bucks. And the Solar Res comparison is like 90 bucks. And both of those are probably the best ones that I have found. I know Golf makes one as well that for theirs that's supposed to be unreal. But yeah. So just so you guys know, Barry Dickow, um, he is he operates a, a bunch of buses. Hmm. So people are sitting here talking about getting a bus up to uh, Olds to go to track. So what? Hopefully you guys show up in your 70s costumes or we won't let you in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a great idea, though. Yeah, hire Barry to bring you bring your boys up. But either way, what I want to do is I would like you to pick up that box that's in the tower behind you at mm -hmm. the bottom shelf. This one? Yeah. Don't worry this about what's on here. there. Yeah, but you can take that sticker off. So what I want to do right now, and I don't know what I'm compelled to do this, and I apologize in advance. This is a Thursday Night Live Fly Tying Season 4 kit, an entire kit, okay? And we've had some really cool people um, purchase kits that they want to, uh, they want to have, they want people to have. So what I want to do is there's somebody in here tonight that needs this kit yeah and uh i'm debating whether saying this has never been a conversation with this person at all and i just want to i think it's a i think it's the right thing to do hmm. so um been supporting us since almost day one uh at times came to the brewery at caravel when we were there and i know it would mean a lot and uh, so this isn't a contest. This is just a fact. And Mr. Ryan Pacific. Yeah, buddy. Um, send us an email with your address and I would love to send you. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you need a pickup tonight. I don't know what it is, but whatever, whatever the vibe that I'm feeling, uh, this kit's for you. So if you could just send us your email and... Uh, me and him have never had this conversation, <laughs> so it's kind of weird, but uh, because the TNL fam is so cool, yeah. I want to send this for you, and I want you to know that we super appreciate, Tim, your camera's gone again, uh, your support as uh, we've come from season zero, one, two, three, four, and you stay here and hang out with us. So Yeah, it's amazing. We're very grateful for you. We're <clears throat> very grateful for everybody here. And tonight, somehow, that was just kind of on my heart to to do that. So I apologize if I made anyone uncomfortable. And Ryan, uh, you are right. We don't have to do that, but that's what this family is about. Yeah, you're just not going to get a camera so, tonight. Oh, I, I think it's overheating because of the heat. It doesn't feel hot. <laughs> they, over, they were just leave it off for a second. 
Do you guys want Tim? Do you just want to hear Tim? <laughs> oh, you might just have yeah. to take my voice and my muscle. So, anyways, that's kind of where that kit's going to go. And uh, what we need to do, if Tim's camera ever works, is get ourselves into the best part of the night, folks. So, uh, get on those quick tie videos, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And oh, so, I know cool. before COVID hit, you guys were cranking out the Airdrie Fly Tying Club. Um, and obviously the gathering <laughs> restrictions kind of, uh, hurt stuff like that. So we're glad that you're here and, uh, so without much further ado, Tim's just going to try to do something with his camera and make it glorious. But this, folks, if you're new here, if this is your first time on Thursday Night Live, this is kind of how we end the show uh, with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, inspiration, motivation, and we call it, what is your win? Oh, you're back on, Tim. He's just waiting. Maybe he's going to try to get the other camera going just in case just in case we have to switch them over. But uh, this is the kind of time here that you guys, I would love you guys to just kind of share your wins just like this. And then we're going to throw them up on the screen and we're going to talk as well about get that aligned properly in here. Um, we share your wins, uh, whatever they are, and then what we'll do, your camera's working. Maybe just open the door and get the heat out of here because it's somehow it got super hot in here. So <laughs> he's vacuuming the duster off. Yeah. <laughs> he had to go for a break. So if your camera shuts off, <laughs> <Vacuuming the duster off. laughs> I believe we have a backup camera for him. So yeah, let's hope. anyways. Yeah, All right, go, Tim. Guys. I was waiting for you to share your win first. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Okay. So my win, I'm going to keep it short and sweet today. Um, this week has been a week of facing some challenges and um for me and just my life in general but the something that's brought me back and a good remembrance and something i said my dad actually said to me today um he said and you, you we don't we all have our own beliefs our own whatever guys we'll leave it there but for me i was raised in a christian home um and my dad just said to me uh, remember tim god is good um and always know that he will not test you beyond what you can bear and he will raise you up on wings of eagles and he will always take care of you um, so for me this week my win is that i have my faith um, i'm excited about that because no matter the challenges that come into my life um, not only do i have my family i have my faith um, i have you guys and uh, what else could could challenge us beyond that god is good he's good all the time amen to that and yeah we will be challenged beyond that what you need to remember is you're going to always be equipped to handle all of those challenges mm -hmm. as they come up. And yeah. sometimes things seem so like overwhelming at times and I get it. I, I, I know what you're talking about, but it's like sometimes when one door closes, another giant door opens. Yeah. Um, yeah. Time. So my wins of the week come multifaceted. And the first one of the week is Mr. Justin Fisher. <laughs> uh, just so you guys know, Justin lives in Lethbridge, which is about a three and a half hour, four hour drive up here to Olds. Yeah. A big and one. I reached out to him last week when our hot water tank kind of went crappy. And uh, Justin runs a plumbing company and he said, I can get there ASAP. And he was going to come Thursday and I said, just come Friday. So he, anyways, he drove all the way up here took care of the problems with the hot water tank and uh yeah you just don't friends like that are are few and far between um and that is because of the tnl fam and that's how me and justin met so just remember folks there's really good people out there if you need a plumber and you're uh, anywhere within twelve thousand miles of lethbridge <laughs> apparently he's coming down. justin <laughs> is your man justin yeah we Super you, grateful for that. Can't uh, hold a fish, but man, he's a good player. Can't. That's a good point. <laughs> the other win that I had this week is... Uh, where is he? I don't know if he's here anymore. Um, do, 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 Novland, right here. There he is. Yeah, so anyways, um, 
started climbing some mountains <laughs> and literally. Uh, <laughs> literally apparently on number two Aaron took me to one he's like <laughs> I know this one is going to be exactly what you're looking for and I'm telling you what folks from the moment we stepped out of the car that thing was straight up and uh yeah I've, I I told myself in the summer this is what I'm going to do and thanks Aaron for every step of the way and sometimes it was five steps we had to stop and wait my legs were on fire and he sat and he waited and he waited and he cheered me on and we got all the way to the top and I remember looking at the top and I was like there's no way in hell we get <laughs> there's no way I'm getting you up get there. up there <laughs> yeah. like none and he just said we're going we're going to the top we're literally we're going to go to the top just take it one step one stage at a time uh so aaron i'm super grateful for you and your friendship and yeah. uh super excited to climb so many more mountains together with you and uh hmm. yes. looks like he agrees <laughs> uh, oh, uh, man. chris also i was checking to see if he was in here um, he's coming up from Colorado, booked three days on the Bow River with us. He's hoping yeah. to get a couple buddies so that we can do multiple boats. Awesome. So that's super cool. Um, Jen Lyle, who's the Steve Lyle, the uh, Steve also Lyle. threw a bunch of dates on the calendar. And um, it, it, that's just, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, one, one day, getting to spend one day with you guys uh, on the river. And I know Sean's checking his calendar so we can redo the wizard run. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, hopefully John Onorati gets up yeah. here this year. Uh, but anyways, uh, I guess it's the TNL fam is my win because I got to uh, do things with them this week. And Aaron, that's where we met was TNL was episode <laughs> zero thousand yeah. Yeah, years we ago. Yeah, we met and now we <coughs> shared days on the I know. water and days on the mountains. Yeah. So this is this is the TNL fam, folks. And uh, I want to get back to you guys. Okay, I posted this one before, but. Uh, Justin's win is first is getting away with the amazing fiance for the first time in a couple of years. My second win is I recently got to hang out with Dana for the day, helping with his plumbing, which is always a great time. <laughs> yes, he, <laughs> he was able to show me some of uh, the input that him and Tim put into the show. I sat him down in the studio and showed him, mm -hmm. and I also shared with him what we'll call the bigger picture. Yeah, uh, the dedication of these two is amazing. I'm so happy they created this group of amazing people. So happy I found this. Yeah, it's awesome. awesome. Steve. Win this week, being there to net my buddy Clint's biggest brown on the bow. 20 incher on a bow river buzzer. That is awesome. That's epic. <laughs> That's uh, so fun. Chaz, his win is his wife. She's so supportive and loves me crazy. It's her birthday tomorrow. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. One more time. We're going to have to give her the old. I, heard today I don't know how to get back birthday. the other music, but it's. Uh, Okay. We got a birthday. <laughs> it's a birthday. See happy how this birthday. works. <laughs> I believe it's Carolyn. Carolyn, Carol. happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Hey, it's your birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy and remember, birthday. folks, if it's your birthday, just let us know and we yeah. give you this little uh, schwam bammo here. Schwam bammo. And, uh, it's just <laughs> kind of. That's okay. We'll get our music back. We'll get our music back. You're doing real good tonight, except for a couple uh, brief pauses. There we go. There we there go. Brief pauses. The yeah. camera malfunctioned, and the heat in here got so intense that even your mustache fell off. <laughs> Wouldn't All that right. be something? Happy you're smiling this week, Tim. My win is getting another puppy fostered and one pending. Uh, that's awesome. Brandy, you, the, your heart is something I couldn't do. I it's, no, I it kills me. Them, like. I see that stuff and I unfollow <laughs> you because <laughs> it's, it's breaking my heart to watch. I know. I mean, it, you're amazing and I'm so happy that there's people like you that can do it both for children and for dogs, but yeah. it's, I don't know if I could say goodbye. Mark. Yeah. My win might be a selfish one, but I'm finally getting a day off from the hospital tomorrow, getting a coffee with my oldest uh, before we head to school and then chilling for the day. Hey man, take the day. It's a win. I know you've been working a lot and, uh, we're working in those stressful environments. It's good to have that day off. Yes. God is good. God is good. Pogues, it's a win when the professional life <laughs> F's off enough <laughs> for me to be able to attend the show. Love Thursdays. Love you too, Pogues. Love you, buddy. Yeah, faith, faith over, over fear. fear. Oh, there's a t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. F-O-F. <-O> -F. <laughs> so Bakum Scott says wouldn't our rent that's spam 
God is great and beer is good. <laughs> Jeff, that is a fact. Yeah, t-shirt number two. We're going to write these down. Uh, oh, man. You. Darren, my win for this week is I'm finally getting the respect I deserve at work and running my own jobs, and it's changed my <clears throat> changed my at-home life, enjoying going to work again. That's awesome, dude. Eh, going to work when you don't enjoy it sucks. Totally sucks. Ah, Johnny, <laughs> the wind is not falling asleep before this week's show. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron, uh, Dana talked about him, but great win with sharing a mountain um, with you this week, Dana. Uh, from car ride to summit, all the feels and emotions that went in the day. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of emotions. <laughs> yeah. So I was not expecting any of that, and thank you. I got something for you guys, and also story time. Day before I had my daughter, I spent a couple hours with you guys and spun up a streamer at Caravel. You guys are great people, and I'm glad to be a part of this family. Airdrie Fly Time Club will happen again soon. Love you too, yeah, pal. Everybody. Appreciate you here. <laughs> Brent. Yeah. My win this so week funny. is figuring out basic math. 168 he, days till he's on the river. <laughs> he keeps saying 533 uh, sleeps, and I'm like, that's a little right, off. Do you have like narcolepsy? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's quick naps. Yeah. It just <laughs> <laughs> one, <laughs> two. <laughs> All right, Cam. Win this week is for my oldest. She's going to stay in New Zealand and go to school for another six months. A big deal for her. Also uh, super cool. That's awesome. Uh, Laura, my win. Thank you for entertaining me this Thursday night. It was really needed. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. for tuning in. Uh, I had hot water tank problems this week as well. However, the win is I called it. And it's still under warranty. Ooh. Well. That's fantastic, too. That's a win. If you need someone to install it, Justin does a great job. <laughs> yes, Chris, there he is. He there is he coming. Is. Nice. He, he paid enough deposits for 52 people. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I think I screwed up. <laughs> He's like, you're going to be so sick of me. <laughs> I'm like, no, Not I'm just chance, super dude. excited. Not a chance. Yeah. Sean Allison, win. Family got through COVID and the girls got back on the ice this week. That's awesome, dude. Mr. Call in a Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. My win this week is getting to tune into the show. It's been super busy for me the last month, starting a new day job and only getting a few days off at Christmas. I've been really missing the TNL fam, and I can't wait for next week already. Awesome. Yeah. Mr. Cole Fitzsimmons, my win is stepping outside my comfort zone and facing some fears both in the work life and personal life. Needless to say, it's electrifying when you can conquer those fears. Looking forward to see what is uh, going to happen this week. Yeah, and buddy. when he says electrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know. One day when Proud he gets permission Cole. to show. <laughs> Cole, you got to jump on those mountains with me and Aaron. Yeah, buddy. Uh, Ron, my win is health of family and friends. Hmm. Will, my win this week is openly acknowledging the great team that I work with and telling them how much I appreciate the efforts um, that they are giving during our tough project. Yeah, it's good to recognize those people. Yeah. And let them know. Mm -hmm. Never be ashamed to tell somebody they matter, they're important, they're doing a great job. Um, as yep. cheese ball as that <laughs> may seem, it literally... You have no idea the effect that can yeah. have for them. Yeah. TNL family <sighs> saves lives. Yeah. Right, we got really behind with the yeah. birthday song. <laughs> Mr. Clint Workington, my win is being out with my buddy Steve on the river and he was willing to risk the ice to help me net the biggest brown of my life. That's awesome, Glenn. Bags. My win for this week is heading. Heading is going to be heading. Hopefully out to catch. <laughs> my first lake of this weekend. Going for an overnighter on the ice. Yeah, good luck, buddy. Hope you get one. Yeah. Scott. Uh, Scott Huston. Big win. Keeping my fam, community, and myself safe while apprehending a carjacker. Oh, wow. Wow, dude. Dang. That is a story. Yeah. <laughs> no joke. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Jerome's in the house. Oh, this is Papa Daddy Aaron. Yeah, Aaron's Papa. And uh, getting a new hip so I can fish this summer with my son Aaron. Yeah. And he didn't wait till fishing season to get it done. Yeah, so. no joke. All the power to the healing of Mr. Nobland. Yeah, buddy. Can't wait to get down in the water with you. Mr. Craig Jones is win for the week. Uh, Ryan getting that tying kit. Yeah, he has a wicked Facebook page for his Airdrie Fly Tying Club. And the kind comments he gives to everyone on their ties. Good for you, Ryan. 
Uh, and second is all the assistance everyone gave me um, when the vice is broke. I'm very much appreciated to all. Yeah. Looks like he's back up, set, and ready to go. Well, we awesome. didn't. I didn't hear the story. No. But apparently, it wasn't Some. a smart play. Joel had a conversation about fly tying at a business meeting last week. Next day, a fellow fly tire gifted me a box of his flies from Western New York State. Got home and sent him a variety of flies that I had tied up. Win-win. He should get his flies in a day or so. Yeah, oh, that's cool. You should also be getting your poster pretty soon, too. Yeah. This Mr. one. Joe. This one here. Looks what's like, up? What's up, Eric? Augustin showed up. Mr. Andy over at Hillbilly Taxidermy. Thursdays are always uh, a win, especially when it comes from minus 30 to almost summer temps. Have a great weekend, everyone. That's crazy. Minus 30 yesterday, plus 10 today. Yeah. Well, that's a weird shift. Michael said his win for the week is we finally have enough ice to stand down. Happy ice fishing. Stay safe. Yeah. Good luck out there, bud. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I love you too, Eric. Hope Mr. You're, uh, Art. My win is being recently retired with a pension and social security, and now the wife comes home to a clean house, groceries <laughs> done, liquor store run done, and bacon wrapped scallops with champagne on her weekends. Life is good, retired life. Fly fishing is soon, man. Oh, yeah. how I do, can't how tell do we you sign up to be his wife? Jealous I am. <laughs> I know. How are you? I'd be yeah. your wife or you. Jeez. Yeah. Did, did we have to do back rubs or anything uh, weird? Mustache rubs. I yeah, I think so. <laughs> there it is. ASMR. Cheers, Pogues. Yeah, enjoy, buddy. enjoy, enjoy. Have to head to bed, Darren. We also have mm. to head to bed. Another win, my Orvis ZG came back from repair. Nice. Mr. Rick Flink, my win for the week is spending last Saturday afternoon with a few of the Norvice ambassadors tying flies and being with my Norvice friends. What's up, awesome. bud? It's awesome. Roger, my win was a quick painless and surprisingly large settlement for my daughter's car after an accident a couple weeks ago back but she's still dealing with an injury to her knee the prayers are coming your way yeah, mr Beatty. see you later jason hmm. looks like everybody's off headed into bed All right. <laughs> when you know you know when you know you know oh doug Win-win Thursday for me, watching Lucy playing volleyball tonight and making it back in time uh, for us to both tune in. Thanks again. Uh, thank you, bud. <coughs> yes, Justin wants to come to the Rocket Man Fly Shop. <laughs> hit, a, hit a nice wad of cash. <laughs> He's he ready to drop. Mr. Ben Armstrong. All right, folks. The show's winding down. But Mr. Ben Armstrong said his win was finally being able... To log on this week and catching a good part of an episode and being reminded of how much I appreciate all the good people a part mm. of the TNL fam. That's a fact. Yeah. No, that's true. It's it's so good, guys, to hear your wins. Your wins inspire us and they inspire everybody else in here. Um, just like Joe was saying here, glad to hear everybody's wins tonight. Uh, have a great week. We can't wait to see you again. Seven days feels like a long time. Too long. Way too long. Too long. Um, but, you know, but do good this things makes this the week. heart grow fonder. Yes, absence does. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, folks. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. So, well, this is the. Did we just drag yeah, this on? Because we so don't want to say goodbye. Can't say goodbye. Cowboys say, don't say goodbye. Say till next time. Till next time. All right, folks. I'm Dana Lottery. And I'm Tim Hepworth. I love you guys. I will miss you, but I'm gonna do great things this week so I can come back inspired motivated fulfilled and hopefully make your life a little bit better yeah. next week when we tie up the muda and, and the royal wolf, royal wolf. and I only guess. two more weeks until we meet at tracks <laughs> pub wearing the best bell bottoms you've ever seen <laughs> hopefully all right all right peace, peace cheers love you I can't feel my body, you're cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough, my mind is fixed on what it wants, I just let you beat me, look at me deceiving, let you get the best of me, in bed with my worst enemy, this is a no go, I just can take cold, this is a danger zone, back up and get me home, this is a no go, I just can take cold, this is a danger zone, back up and get me So
Stop the time. 